So guys welcome back to our channel, so in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto became trap god in Justice League Universe and Femme Kyubi X Harem movie, this is part 1 and if you want full complete series then complete 3000 likes on this video, and I will upload part 2 of this video, do check it description, let's get in the video. Standing in an isolated spot that overlooked the city of Gotham were two odd figures, one male and one female, both of them very tall by the standard of humans and in possession of some very distinctive features. The woman was an incredible beauty who stood at six feet four inches. Had long, shining white hair that reached down to her thighs. Red eyes with a predatory slit and an alluring dusky skin tone. She was dressed in a body hugging, full length white kimono with red accents and a slit on the side so that it showed a flash of leg when she walked and left her shoulders exposed, showing off a great figure. Magatama markings encircled the wide sleeves and bust line, coincidentally also drawing attention to her impressive cleavage, which would have hovered between between a C and D cup on a shorter woman, on her it seemed larger due to being scaled appropriately for her height. The man stood at 6 feet 7 inches and while he was not handsome in the conventional sense. What with the deep whisker marks on his cheeks and the jagged black marks on the sides of his face. He was far from unattractive, his hair was of similar length to that of his companion. Though it was an extremely bright golden color instead of white and his eyes had the same predatory slit, but they were a gold-orange color as opposed to her red, his skin was also a much lighter shade than hers, though still tanned, he wore black pants and a white, high-collared haori decorated with magatama markings, which was kept open to reveal a powerfully muscled chest, the hilt of a long nodashi was visible over his right shoulder and a green crystal hung from a cord around his neck. Both of them were barefoot, but seemed unbothered by their lack of footwear, despite the pebbles and rather low temperature of the ground. By far their most eye-catching feature however, were the pair of horns on their heads, giving an appearance that was both regal and demonic, the claws and fanged teeth only further supported this image, the faint glow of their hair made them seem even more otherworldly. Naruto was inordinately pleased that eating the chakra fruit had bestowed on him the same type of horns that his wife sported, perhaps more pleased that he had a reason to be considering that it was just a cosmetic effect, but he didn't care because the horns were awesome, he'd long since given up on wearing his previous leather get-up, finding the chakra-formed clothing to be incomparably more comfortable, not to mention indestructible. He'd destroyed the crystal imprisoning Madara's soul some time ago, finding it tiring to keep holding on to his anger at the man, honestly, if it hadn't been for the near success the Uchiha had at killing Xana, he would have released him even sooner, either way it was hard to keep holding a grudge against a dead man especially when it was that very dead man's machinations that culminated in an ascension to godhood for you and your wife even if that hadn't been his intent. More importantly, it was hard to hold a grudge when you've just spent the past decade or so doing nothing but having incredible amounts of incredible sex and playing around with your new powers. Despite having arrived only about a week before, Naruto and Zana had already formed an opinion of this new dimension that they found themselves in. This dimension is really weird, Naruto stated, fairly amused by what they'd found out about it so far. You have quite the gift for understatement husband, Xana replied, equally amused. Honestly, superheroes in capes going around fighting crime, calling themselves things like, Batman, and, Superman, don't even get me started on the unimaginatively named sidekicks, I don't think I've ever heard of anything so ridiculously corny before in my life, Naruto said with a headshake. I agree. Even your flattery isn't anywhere near as bad as this, Zana said agreeably. Oh come on, my flattery isn't that bad is it? Naruto protested. Zana was unswayed, it's pretty bad, Naruto responded by pouting, forming a black shakuho made completely of chakra and poking at the ground with it, the miniature rain cloud that he created over his head completed the image of utter dejection that he was projecting. Zana chuckled in amusement at the antics of her husband. Finding the frivolous use of his powers to be very funny, just about anyone else would have developed an uncontrollably inflated ego if they had such power at their command, but Naruto had only ever cared about power as a means to an end, being powerless would make him unhappy only because it would render him unable to help her, and possibly any, little sisters, he happened to take a liking to, if she should ever need it and that was far more flattering than any words could ever be. Though his compliments really were corny, there was absolutely no doubt about that. Naruto grinned at hearing her chuckle at his little act, pleased that he was able to make her laugh even after spending ten years on an island together with no company save each other. So, you think we might be able to have some fun here? He asked, 
getting to the point of their visit to this dimension. Naruto. I am a goddess, of course we can have fun here, she said scathingly, but her eyes were full of amusement. Naruto rolled his eyes at her response, that had turned into a running gag a long time ago and she never missed an opportunity to use it. I suppose we could join the superhero side but that would just be embarrassing beyond description, the horned blonde said musingly, rubbing his chin contemplatively, no way in hell was he going around in a silly mask and, fighting crime. If he tried that, he would just end up killing everyone that he decided deserved to die. Somehow, he got the feeling that that kind of attitude wouldn't be very popular among the superhero community. I doubt you'd want to become one of these so-called supervillains. Either, it would be only marginally less embarrassing, not to mention that neither one of us has any interest in harming random bystanders just for the sake of fun, Zana added. Naruto sighed in agreement. Fuck. This dimension is so damn cheesy that it's actually hard to think of anything fun to do, from what we've found out so far, the villains are almost entirely made up of morons and the heroes are both stupid and corny, how do they expect to get anything done if nobody ever kills anyone? He ranted to himself. I've been wondering about that myself actually, they act above the law and yet continuously spare obviously lost causes, no matter how many times it bites them in the ass, as if they are afraid that slaying evil will make them evil in turn. Zana mused. Naruto didn't reply, but instead gazed contemplatively at the city below, his mind churning over several ideas, from what they'd learned, Gotham was under the protection of Batman and his two sidekicks, the unimaginatively named Batgirl and the overly brightly dressed Robin, just thinking about how ridiculous those three were made him want to giggle, though Batgirl was definitely hot so she could be forgiven. Their ridiculous names, outfits and refusal to kill the bad guys aside, there just had to be a way to have some fun with the situation. I think I may have an idea or two, he said eventually, with a slow grin spreading over his face. Oh. Do tell, she prodded. Well it would require some pretty good acting from you if you think you can manage it, he replied, already knowing what her response would be. Naruto. I am a goddess, I can do anything, Naruto snickered. That joke was probably just going to get funnier now that they were going to be interacting with people again. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Naruto leisurely made his way into the abandoned building. The city had a remarkably large amount of them, where he had just now seen three men drag a desperately struggling young woman that looked to be in her early twenties, claws flexing in anticipation of what he intended to do. Zana had agreed to his plan after some arguing and they had separated, she had ensconced herself in a comfortable hiding spot and was using a severely overpowered version of the Byakugan to keep an eye on him not because she was worried about him, but to keep herself amused until it was time for her debut. Naruto personally thought it was really cool that she was now the holder of pretty much every bloodline to have ever existed in the elemental nations, it had surprised him at first, but it made sense, all bloodlines had originated from the Shinju and she had taken over that spot as well as retaking all chakra in the world, thus returning everything to her. Meanwhile, Naruto had gone into the city to look for some trouble, the concrete and steel nature of it dulled his ability to sense life in a most displeasing manner, but it had no impact on his negative emotion sensing, which he had developed after eating the chakra fruit. He'd barely been in the city proper for half an hour when he'd sensed the negative emotions being generated by what was obviously an abduction that was going to be followed by rape. He could only shake his head at the stupidity of the city's supposed defender, while he wasted time catching and recatching the same criminals over and over again atrocities like this were allowed to happen unchecked. The men had just thrown the woman on a dirty mattress and were in the process of removing their coats when Naruto entered behind them. The woman saw him and her eyes widened at his appearance, but nobody had time to react any further as tree roots broke through the floor and blocked the exit, at the same time as that happened, two of the men were impaled non-fatally through the lungs by roots that had grown right behind them. Naruto smiled to himself in grim approval when he saw that, their deaths would be slow and suitably agonizing and they wouldn't be doing any annoying screaming due to being impaled through the lungs. The apparent leader of the trio spun around and fell on his ass in shock and fear at the sight before him, no doubt he was thinking that a demon had come to kill him. Stay back. He squealed desperately and backed away as far as he was able before hitting a wall. Naruto cocked his head quizzically at the would-be rapist, you don't actually expect me to listen to you do you? It was rather fortunate that Zana had already used the human path to learn English from some unlucky criminal and then passed it on to him, otherwise this wouldn't be much of a conversation. I'll give you anything you want. Naruto gazed contemplatively at the terrified man, 
idly noting that the other two had just died, I suppose that I could let you go if you did something for me. The man's face lit up with hope, anything you want, I'll do it, just don't kill me please. Naruto nodded and gave his terms, I want you to cut out your own heart and eat it, if you can manage that, then I won't hurt you. The previously hopeful visage turned ashen, please don't kill me, he begged desperately. I guess that means that you won't do as I said? Naruto asked rhetorically, that's not very nice, you already said that you'd do anything, going back on your word like that is really bad form, he scolded. I don't want to die, he wailed, tears and snot now running down his face in rivers. I'm sure that the young lady over there didn't want to be raped either, but that didn't seem important to you, so I'm really confused by your behavior, the horned blonde said in a tone of mild confusion even as he drew the kusanagi from its sheath with a rasp of steel, weren't we all doing whatever we wanted without regard for others? The man was at this point just blubbering in incoherent terror and was thus unable to respond. Seeing that the conversation was over, Naruto stabbed the kusanagi into the man's chest with the blunt side turned upwards, making sure to miss his vitals, the man screamed as he was lifted into the air by the sword in his chest and reflexively grabbed it. You seem like the type to think that any woman you forced yourself on would enjoy being impaled by your sword, Naruto said in a conversational tone, I would really appreciate it if you could describe to me exactly how enjoyable it is to be impaled against your will, just to satisfy my curiosity. The would-be rapist continued to scream in pain, though not as loudly anymore and tried to push himself off the blade unsuccessfully, despite holding a grown man up in the air by the end of his sword with just one hand, the kusanagi remained rock steady, Naruto's strength more than great enough for something like that, the man's own body weight kept pushing him down on the blunt side of the sword painfully. Naruto frowned when he didn't get an answer, well if you're going to give me the silent treatment, then fuck you too, upon saying that, he twisted the kusanagi around so that the sharp side was pointed upwards, which caused the preternaturally sharp blade to slowly cut upwards as gravity continued to assert its power. Naruto removed it just before it could start cutting into the skull, as he had no desire to see brains sliding out of the skull and wobbling around on the floor thank you very much, as a final touch he swung it swiftly so as to send the blood flying off and resheathed it. With that done, he turned towards the terrified woman who had been observing the entire spectacle with silent horror. She scooted away and whimpered as soon as he approached, squeezing her eyes shut and trying to make herself as small as possible. She stiffened and started shaking when he sat down next to her and pulled her into a hug, fearing that she had just exchanged a set human rapists for a single demonic one, not thinking clearly enough to note that the horned blonde clearly didn't approve of such an act. Shish, it's all right, you're safe now, he purred into her ear softly, petting her hair at the same time, just relax, everything is going to be okay. Almost against her will, her body relaxed into the warm embrace and her breathing slowed to a more normal pace from its previous terrified panting, unknown to her, he had imbued chakra into his voice to give the words greater force, she was being compelled to listen, a person with a strong enough will could resist, but people like that were rare. Naruto continued to issue a low, throaty growl that sounded a lot like purring and held her until she had completely calmed down. There we go, all calm down, you're such a good girl he murmured to her, what's your name? Rachel, she answered softly and clung tightly to him when he stood up and started to carry her out of the building, she didn't put too much thought into why she suddenly felt so comfortable being held by the extremely scary stranger, he had saved her after all and he was being so nice. Well Rachel, you're going to have to tell me where you live so that I can get you there. K, she murmured and buried her face into the crook of his neck. So cute, Naruto whispered to himself. She really was cute too, all soft brown hair and big brown eyes. Naruto, you had better not be picking up any little sisters, Zana's voice echoed in his mind sternly. But, he tried to protest, no, she repeated with the same stern tone, you know that we aren't going to be staying in this dimension very long, you'll just mope later if you have to leave her behind. I guess, he agreed grudgingly, after ten years without any little sisters to cuddle and tease, he was just about ready to invade an orphanage or something equally drastic. Zana sighed and spoke again, I promise that we'll stay longer in the next dimension and you can pick up as many little sisters as you want there. You are the best wife ever, I love you so much, he returned happily. And you husband, are a brute with a very strange fetish, but I love you anyway. Naruto continued to hold Rachel tightly as he followed her directions towards where she lived, he was also bending the light around them to make them invisible 
exactly the way that Zana had showed him, with his hair and howry, he would have stuck out like a beacon in the rather gloomy Gotham nighttime. Sometimes, he still marveled at the ease of chakra control he had now that the chakra truly belonged to him, he'd never even noticed how much he had to struggle to make it work for him before Zana had gifted him with the chakra fruit, now that the chakra was his instead of being stolen from the original Shinju, it was eager to obey his wishes instead of resisting him, he was even capable of genjutsu and medical ninjutsu. What's your name? His passenger asked suddenly, apparently recalling that he had never given her his name. You can call me Uzu, he couldn't go around using his real name just now, because there was a small chance that it would screw up his and Zana's plans for later, slight though the chance was, it would still work better if he had only one name, Uzumaki Naruto sounded too human for what they had planned. Zana had teased him incessantly over his lack of imagination though, especially after the way he had bitched over the lack of imagination that the local superheroes had with their names. Rachel was quiet for a little while before she tentatively spoke up again, are you a demon? Naruto couldn't help chuckling in amusement at the question, depends on who you ask. The mysterious non-answer seemed to relax her further for some reason, but Naruto certainly wasn't going to complain about it. Can I touch your horns? Naruto burst into surprised laughter at the blurted out question and the blushing face that accompanied it, knock yourself out. Face on fire at her own forwardness and the amused smirk being leveled at her, Rachel nevertheless reached out to touch the protrusions and ran her hands over them curiously, she yelped in surprise when Naruto suddenly swung her around so that she was sitting on his shoulders, but quickly found herself enjoying the new position. This is so cool, she said with a small grin and grabbed the horns as if they were a steering wheel using them to navigate him towards her home. Naruto snorted out another laugh but let her do as she pleased, if something as minor as that helped her feel better after what had nearly happened to her, then he was more than happy to let her have some fun, even if it was at his expense. He couldn't keep himself foam commenting when she started subconsciously rubbing his horns rather suggestively though. Well aren't you a naughty girl, but I'm afraid you can't give my horns a handjob. He could almost hear the blood rushing to her face as she jerked her hands away as if they'd been scalded. Sorry. Don't be, I'm just teasing you, he reassured, sensing that she felt genuinely ashamed at being called out on it, she probably hadn't even been aware of what she was doing. Reassured, she tentatively put her hands back on the horns and kept them there for the rest of the trip home. That's where I live, she said, pointing towards an apartment building. Naruto was amused to note that she actually sounded disappointed that the trip was over. You've had an exciting day, so you should go get some rest, he told her as he set her down. Will I ever see you again? Rachel asked hopefully. Probably not, though I have no doubt that you'll be hearing about me on the news soon enough. She looked a bit saddened at that, but not surprised. Whoa would you like to come upstairs? She asked with a stuttering blush. Naruto gave her a hug and murmured into her ear, I'm flattered but I really have places that I need to be. One of the side effects of speaking to people while enhancing your voice with chakra to make yourself more persuasive was the fact that it made you attractive to them in the extreme, it even worked on men, which was more than a tad creepy. If he'd used it to inspire fear then the target would be left feeling irrationally afraid of him even years down the line, it was a powerful ability and not one he had any intention of using often. The only reason he'd used it on Rachel was because he knew that she had been scared out of her mind and definitely not rational enough to believe him if he simply told her that he wasn't going to hurt her. Either way, Naruto wasn't going to be sleeping with any woman that was under the effects of mild brainwashing, even if it had been for a good cause. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
being the considerate husband that he was, made sure to remind her of it frequently. When he moved his mouth down to her nipples she dismissed her clothing, leaving her naked, with Naruto doing the same right afterwards. Instead of allowing the blonde to make any further headway on his own initiative, she grabbed his horns and pulled his head in between her legs. Honestly, letting that girl grab your horns like that when you belong to me, you had better make it up to me, though the words were scolding, they were said with an expectant pant as the blonde inhaled a deep whiff of her glistening nether lips. The only reply she received was an abnormally long tongue plundering her insides, making her arch into his face with a cry and pull him even closer by his horns, feeling his sharp teeth scraping over the sensitive flesh. Naruto had definitely been onto something when he'd immediately identified the horns as points of sexual interest. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
but perhaps your cute little sidekicks would like to join us for this discussion. I'm sure it must be uncomfortable to lurk in the rafters like that, was the mild response, but it caused some surprise for the still hiding duo. A small nod from Batman caused them to drop down to his side so that all three of them were facing the relaxed blonde. So, what can I do for you three? Be aware that I'm not into masks in case you're looking to sell. They ignored the second sentence, though Batgirl and Robin were becoming a bit unnerved by the strangeness of the situation, usually they would be eyeballs deep in traps and henchmen by now. You didn't answer my question, Batman stated, intently looking if he could find any discernible weakness, he fully expected it to come down to a fight soon, but it was always good to gather information first. I don't recall you asking me any questions, Naruto replied, seeming to be honestly puzzled. Batman's face took a distinctly annoyed cast as he clarified, why did you let yourself be found? Oh, I just wanted to meet the man who is shameless enough to go around dressed like that as he fights crime, the blonde answered with a smirk. After answering the superhero's question, he turned his gaze towards the only female present and looked her over with clear appreciation, though I must say that your associate looks much better in that kind of outfit. Batgirl wasn't sure if she should feel complimented or repulsed at the blatant once over. Why did you come to Gotham? Why have you been killing so many people? Batman demanded, wanting to see if the horned blonde was in a sharing mood, many villains he'd encountered so far seemed all too eager to reveal their plans and it often caused their downfall. Naruto sighed in disappointment and asked a question of his own, didn't you want to ask something more obvious first? When he got nothing but mildly confused silence for a few seconds he prompted them again, perhaps you Batgirl. Do you have any questions burning in your brain? Batgirl frowned slightly as she considered whether she should play along and decided that there was no harm in it, he did say if they had any obvious questions for him and there was definitely one very obvious question on her mind ever since she'd seen him. What are you? Naruto grinned widely as the redhead asked exactly what he'd been hoping for, he'd seen her ogling his horns, claws, fangs and whisker marks ever since she dropped down from the rafters, which was why he directed his question to her specifically. Horny, he told her with a leer and deliberately extended his tongue an obscene distance out of his mouth. Batgirl recoiled with a blush, feeling highly uncomfortable at the blatant sexual interest being displayed in her, she was used to being treated as a nuisance by villains, not as a woman. The suggestive waggle he made with his tongue before he returned it to his mouth certainly didn't improve the situation. How long have you been waiting to say that? Robin asked dryly once the initial shock at the extra long tongue had faded, despite the rather tense situation, he couldn't help but find the terrible pun amusing. Pretty long, Naruto replied with obvious amusement and ran a finger across one of his horns. Enough. Batman commanded becoming irritated with the disturbingly friendly banter between his sidekicks and the man they were intending to arrest, why have you been killing people? Instead of answering the question, Naruto sighed tiredly and addressed Batgirl again, completely ignoring Batman, is he always that wound up? Batgirl once again felt uncomfortable, the horned blonde hadn't even bothered standing up, much less done anything hostile and now he was holding a conversation with her as if they were friendly acquaintances instead of enemies. The fact that Batman was in fact that wound up almost constantly was another point of discomfort. She was saved from having to answer by Batman losing his patience with the conversation and interrupting again. Uzu, you've committed multiple murders and are a wanted man in the eyes of the police, will you turn yourself in peacefully? He asked despite knowing that the possibilities of it were pretty remote, it never hurt to try. Arara, I don't remember murdering any people, what are you talking about? Naruto asked quizzically it was apparently time to put things in motion. Don't play games with me, there have been multiple eyewitness reports of you killing over two dozen people and circumstantial evidence for many more. Oh that, Naruto said in apparent realization, I hardly think that disposing of that trash counts as murder, you wouldn't considering putting down a rabid animal murder would you? You've been killing people not rabid animals, Batman asserted with a glare at the blonde's callousness. I will concede that they were not animals, they chose their path, making them far lower than animals, they needed to be purged from this world as soon as possible and I consider it a failing on your part that you failed to do this before my arrival. All three heroes fumed at the accusation, something which they definitely didn't want to hear from a remorseless killer. Nobody has the right to decide who gets to live or die, not you and not me, we aren't gods, Batman said, firmly, keeping the anger out of his voice, he knew better than to let himself be provoked. Naruto snorted, you certainly aren't, but I am, 
The three heroes were taken aback by the blunt claim to godhood, not even the most delusional villains they'd fought had ever claimed to be gods and they honestly didn't know how to react to it, what they did realize, was that the man before them was hideously dangerous and not just because of his presumed power, but also because he was no doubt going to feel justified in everything he did. You see so little, not even trying to understand the bigger picture, by killing those people I am doing a favor both to them and those who remain in this world, the living will no longer be preyed upon and those slain can no longer continue to build up bad karma before they return to the cycle of samsara, in this way, I am shortening their suffering in the realm of hell before they are reincarnated. It had been both surprising and funny to discover that the six paths of the Rinnegan were a religion in this dimension. Though to be fair, it could have been a religion back in the elemental nations as well, the chronic inability of the people back in his and Xana's original dimension to keep track of their own history could easily account for the lack of mention of it, neither he nor Xana were at all surprised to find some overlap between dimensions, it made sense since it was likely the same set of gods that had created them. Either way it was good for shoveling some bullshit, the whole, six realms in the cycle of samsara, was entirely philosophical and not even close to how the afterlife worked but it had given him this idea for screwing with people. You think you're some kind of divine messiah, saving people from their own sins by killing them before they can make it worse for themselves? Robin asked, his incredulity coming through clearly. Naruto snorted again, hardly, even though I am a god, I wouldn't have gone out of my way to do this normally. Then why are you doing this? Batman asked with a scowl. For fun, Naruto answered with a fanged grin, fun. Batgirl echoed in disbelief, horrified by the complete lack of respect for life the horned blonde was displaying, even if those he was killing were criminals. Uh huh. Naruto nodded, disregarding their negative reaction, I've got to keep myself busy until I finish what I've come to do on this world after all. And what would that be? Batman asked coolly, hiding his anger at the blonde. That is, a secret, he said with a smirk and stood up from the Mokaton made throne. He had a vague thought about how many of these thrones he and Xana were leaving all over the place, it would probably leave quite a few people scratching their heads when they came across them later. The three heroes tensed, preparing for a fight as the blonde started walking towards them. Well, it was fun talking to you, now if you don't mind I'm gonna go kill some more people, Naruto said with a careless shrug and started making his way towards the exit. We do mind actually, Batman said and moved forward to attack, followed by his sidekicks. Naruto quirked an amused eyebrow at their cautious approach, not even bothering to get into a ready position as he leaned on his shikuho, even if you mind, I don't see what you can do about it. Batman didn't answer but attacked instead, even though he didn't like attacking someone that was clearly not intending to fight, usually the villains would be right in the middle of some diabolical plot or more than willing to get into a fight, so this lackadaisical attitude was throwing him off. Naruto had no problem at all avoiding the slow attack. Batman was the type that would no doubt have been at least a cage level shinobi if he had chakra, but the fact was that he didn't and was therefore nothing more than a very impressively trained normal human. He let the shakuho disperse as he continued to evade the attacks of the three heroes, sometimes letting them strike him just for the sake of amusement as he saw their frustration at being unable to even bruise him. Giving both Batman and Robin a light push to send them stumbling away, he caught Batgirl's leg when she slammed a kick into his side and pulled her close to his chest. How would you like to ditch these two losers and go somewhere more private with me? He asked while his hand crept up her thigh and towards her rear end. As if. She snapped back with a glare, clearly angered by his proposition, she also tried to get free, but discovered that she was utterly helpless against his strength. She managed to get loose when a metal object bounced off Naruto's skull and he let the woman go in exchange for grabbing whatever had struck him in the head. Examining the strangely bat-shaped projectile in his hand curiously, he turned to the thrower, what's this? A batarang. Batman answered evenly, Naruto snorted out a laugh at the ridiculous name and replied to the man in a completely deadpan tone, a batarang? Seriously? Do you have a 12-year-old boy hidden somewhere that names these things for you or something? Robin, who had been behind Naruto's back the entire time and who was being completely ignored, chose this moment to some bolus at the blonde binding his arms to his chest. You might be strong, but that wire is made of a carbon-reinforced polymer, there's no way you can get free, even if you were a god, Robin said with a smirk, his tone tinged with mockery at the end. Naruto turned towards the garishly dressed sidekick and bared his teeth in a mockery of a grin as he replied, then I guess that I must be stronger than god. 
Even as he spoke he was already straining his arms hard, causing the wire to creak ominously and then snap loudly. While the three heroes looked stunned at the display of raw strength, just now realizing how easily he could have ended them, Naruto made several poses at Batgirl, making the redhead huff irritably at his continued attempts to get her interested in sleeping with him. Inwardly though, he was impressed by the wire, it was much, much stronger than anything that had been used in the elemental nations, especially as it was not chakra enhanced, it may not have done anything to his indestructible chakra Hauri, but it had broken his skin under it from the pressure he'd needed to exert in order to snap it, which was no small feat. Well, this has been an amusing little diversion, but I guess I'll be going since Batgirl isn't interested in sleeping with me. And you think we're just going to let you leave? Batgirl asked with some incredulity, even though she was also wondering how to stop this juggernaut. The only way you could possibly get me to stay is if you drop your panties, Naruto replied airily and sent chains after them. To their credit, all three heroes avoided the initial attack and instantly deduced that staying in a confined space would work to their disadvantage, before they could get outside however, thick tree roots blocked off the exit. Shortly after, Robin was captured when he tried to escape through the roof, followed by Batgirl. Batman lasted only slightly longer, but was also inevitably captured, he could have made it out, but was unwilling to leave his sidekicks behind, which caused his capture. All three of them struggled uselessly for a while before deciding to conserve their energy, it was hardly the first time that they'd been captured, though usually it wasn't all three of them at once, at the very least, the horned blonde didn't seem to have any interest in actually killing or even harming them. Naruto shifted the chains around so that Batgirl's hands were bound behind her back and her legs were held slightly spread by the chains winding their way around them even as she was suspended in the air, the other two were simply bound like potato sacks and similarly held in the air. He moved towards the redhead and gripped her face in his clawed hands, causing her to try leaning away, but to no avail, she said nothing when he removed her mask, aside from aiming a furiously defiant glare at him, which did nothing except make him chuckle. Cute glare you've got there, it goes well with the pretty face it's on, he said with a smirk. So what are you going to do now that you know our identities? She asked with heavy sarcasm, tell it to every piece of scum in the city? Actually, I have no idea what your real name is, though I would like to know, Naruto said as he ran his fingers through her hair, ignoring her obvious discomfort, gesturing towards the other two, he spoke again, as for them, I don't even care, they aren't sexy women, so they can go hang, get it? Hang? He finished with a grin, gesturing to the two men hanging suspended in his chains. Batgirl was at first incredulous but then groaned at the terrible pun, just her luck to be captured by a flaming pervert with a penchant for making bad puns. Now then my dear, as you can see I am especially well suited for bondage play, have you reconsidered my earlier proposition? Naruto asked, grinning at the bound woman. Why the hell would that make me reconsider? She burst out in angry incredulity. Naruto looked utterly crestfallen by her words, you mean, you aren't into bondage? No. Oh, I thought for sure that you would be, based on that skin-tight outfit you're wearing, he muttered disappointedly. She merely glared at him in answer, how about some S and M? You can be the S first if you want, Naruto offered generously. No. You want to be the M? He asked again, sounding excited at the prospect. No damn it. I am not a pervert. That's a load of crap, everyone is a pervert, Naruto asserted with a scoff. Well I'm not, she shot back, red-faced from both anger and embarrassment. If you weren't, then you wouldn't have known what I'm talking about, he countered with a grin. Batgirl took a deep breath, visibly struggling to regain her calm, she knew that she shouldn't have let herself be provoked so easily but the horned blonde was remarkably good at provoking people. I am not into bondage, S&M or anything even remotely similar and even if I was, it certainly wouldn't be with a monster like you, she said with conviction, staring him dead in the eye. So, just to be sure, you don't want to have sex with me. He sounded honestly confused, as if something like that just didn't compute, as far as he was concerned, being called a monster was a compliment. No, I don't want to have sex with you, she snapped feeling humiliated by their easy defeat and her patience strained by his constant attempts to get into her panties, his arrogant self-assurance that she would want to sleep with him certainly didn't help. What if I told you that I can make you scream in pleasure until you pass out? No, she shouted into his face, too bad, so sad, he said with a sigh, though he was obviously not as put out as he pretended to be. Tree roots then grew under her and bound her, 
The same happening to Batman and Robin even as the chains retreated, Batgirl only now saw that Robin was apparently saying something, but no sound was getting through. What did you do to them? She demanded. Naruto looked over at the bound males and gave a shrug, I'm just preventing any sound from reaching us, nothing to get excited about. He continued speaking before the redhead could reply, well, since you don't want to have a good time, I'm going to Arkham to have myself a little bloodbath, it might be funny to see what you guys do if someone slaughters all the bad guys, he finished with a snicker, obviously amused by the thought. Having done what he had set out to do, Naruto made his way out, leaving the three heroes bound by roots, they'd get out soon enough, but not soon enough to prevent his little killing spree in Arkham, he absentmindedly crushed the small tracking device that Batman had planted on him during the fight, the man would have to try harder if he wanted to slip something like that past him. Now it was up to Xana to make things even more confusing for the heroes. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Neither of the two women really felt evil, though he knew that they weren't entirely good people either. Naruto could hardly judge them for that though, considering that he wasn't exactly a paragon of justice himself. Ivy remained silent, just staring at him warily, though she did move to give Harley a slight, one-armed hug, her earlier thoughts of intrigue by his powers were being rapidly eroded by his seemingly one-track mind, it was like he didn't think of anything but sex and killing. Screw it then, he shrugged after thinking it over for a bit, you're free to go, just try not to hurt random innocents and I won't have to change my mind. And who would you classify as random innocents? Ivy asked cautiously. You know, just regular people going about their lives and the like, Naruto replied airily. Does that include humans who harm nature? She asked, trying to get a feel for his beliefs on the subject. Most people don't do any deliberate harm to nature, he responded, besides, I don't know why you're getting so bent out of shape, humanity is going to go extinct long before they manage to kill nature and you're going to be dead long before either happens. Someone has to protect nature from their predations, she responded heatedly, forgetting her fear of him for a moment. He grinned at her obvious passion on this subject, suit yourself, I'm just saying that your impact is going to be minimal no matter what, especially when you're discrediting yourself by acting in an obviously criminal manner. She fumed silently at him but said nothing, anyway, you'll want to get going if you want to escape Batgirl's sexy grip, and those two lunkheads she travels with I suppose. Poison Ivy frowned at the words, knowing them to be true, while she led Harley through the somewhat bloodied hallways, full of unconscious guards, she had to wonder at Uzu's fixation on women, or was it just Batgirl? XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
so hopefully his bat-themed colleague would eventually get used to the idea of cooperation on more than just the bigger issues. Clark could see that his surprise visitor was visibly restraining herself from lashing out again when she spoke, Zana. He lowered his hand awkwardly when it became clear that she had no intention of shaking it, he chastised himself for a moment when he considered that she was obviously not native to Earth, so a handshake was probably not something she was familiar with. In reality, Zana was perfectly aware of the custom of handshaking, she was just making things harder than they needed to be. You said you needed help? Clark gratefully seized on the opportunity to move past the awkward moment and go into familiar territory. You alone will be insufficient, gather your Justice League, first, I have no desire to repeat myself, Zana commanded. Clark blinked, but nodded, this strange woman's abrasive attitude was starting to get on his nerves, but he couldn't argue that she had a point. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Xana once more muttered before explaining, My people came to this world, more precisely to the country you now know as Japan, a long time ago and taught them some of our skills, language, traditions and religion. Apparently they didn't appreciate it and started calling us demons once we left. Can't imagine why, Lantern muttered sarcastically, earning himself another glare from Xana. Anyway, I am being pursued by the strongest of my people and he has tracked me here, well, any straight-up battle between her and Naruto would be a stalemate since they were both immortal, but she was still a good bit stronger than her husband, telling them that would ruin the joke though. Uzu? Batman guessed. Yes, my mother the queen sent me here because she heard of the supposed power of Superman in this Justice League of yours and thought that you would be able to safeguard me from him. Xana had to struggle mightily not to snort at the idea of needing protection from Naruto. Even so, she was weaving a subtle genjutsu to make them more trusting. Wonder Woman was intrigued by the knowledge of another kingdom apparently ruled by women and resolved to ask Xana some questions about it later, even if she did find the horned female's attitude appalling. Superman rationalized to himself that her prickly attitude was a combination of stress from being hunted and natural arrogance due to being royalty. Why would he be chasing you? Batman questioned further, the others letting him do his thing as he was the best interrogator among them. Nobody has ever heard him outright state the reason but we believe it is because I am the current holder of the Magatama of Yasukani and thus, the Mirror of Yada, at this point she gestured to the softly glowing Magatama necklace that she was wearing just for show, if he were to kill me, ownership of them would pass to him and empower him greatly, she inserted just the right amount of thinly concealed unease into her voice to make it seem sincere. Seeing their terse expressions on her behalf, it was all Xana could do not to crack up laughing. Damn it, this is harder than I thought it would be. What's wrong my dear? I thought you were a goddess that can do anything, Naruto's teasing tone responded to her through their mental link. Shut up husband, you got the easy part of this plan so you have no right to comment, she retorted. What do these items do? Superman asked. The mirror is a magical construct that is capable of deflecting any kind of energy attack, but it requires the necklace in order to be used, she explained and formed a golden barrier between her hands. She once again had to keep her face from showing the amusement she was feeling at their looks of interest, honestly, show them something shiny and everyone starts gawking, though the explanation of the Yada mirror was remarkably close to the truth, except for the fact that it was a Susano technique, the necklace she was wearing was nothing more than a shiny prop. The sword that Uzu carries, is it the sword of Kusanagi? Batman asked shrewdly. I see legends of the items have persisted despite the passing of time, yes, it is the sword of Kusanagi, the sword that pierces and severs all things, Uzu has taken it by force from its previous wielder, now he desires the other two items to complete the set, well, Orochimaru was not exactly its previous wielder if you counted Tenten, but that wasn't relevant right now. She and Naruto had seen pictures of the three, Japanese imperial regalia, and it had caused them much hilarity, the rusted piece of crap that passed for the Kusanagi in this dimension in particular had been the source of many chuckles. Wait wait, if you're a princess, don't you have guards to protect you? Flash butted in. I was wondering about that myself, Hawk Girl added with Wonder Woman nodding along. Normally the royal guard would be enough to protect me, but they are insufficient to stop Uzu, Xana responded. Why? Batman asked simply, Xana sighed, as if it was a difficult subject, in reality she was forcing down her amusement at the crap she was about to feed them. Uzu was once a sage of the six paths, a priest and a holy man. But something happened to shake his faith, he turned his back on the path of enlightenment and instead began to walk the heretical outer path. Gaining many supernatural powers at the cost of his soul being forever lost in darkness once he dies, if he dies, with the powers now under his command, none of my people have the strength to match him, he has even begun to believe himself a god whose purpose was to slay all evil in the mortal world he is likely seeking the artifacts in my keeping in order to make this easier to achieve. When Naruto had proposed that she tell them this little piece of fiction, she had burst out laughing in his face, the mere idea of Naruto being a holy man was just so absurd that anyone who had known him for even five minutes would have dismissed it out of hand. That certainly sounds like him, Batman said, you've already encountered him? Xana asked with faked sharpness. Yes, he's been going through the criminals in Gotham like a harvester, but he said he was only doing it to keep himself busy until he finishes what he's come here to do, which I'm guessing is finding you. Xana nodded, not quite trusting herself to speak without sounding amused. What can you tell us about him Batman? 
Wonder Woman asked. He's very powerful, strong enough to break a carbon polymer wire with a little effort and fast enough to dance circles around us. He can command trees to grow out of nothing, form freely controlled chains out of his body and apparently create a Buddhist staff out of some kind of malleable black substance at will as well as other things most likely, he's also very durable, nothing that I or my sidekicks did even scratched him, he wasn't even taking us seriously, so I can't be sure if he showed us all of his powers. What about his personality? Green Lantern asked, he's a shameless pervert, Batman stated instantly, causing some incredulous blinking, he spent most of the fight making lewd propositions to Batgirl and cracking jokes, if he wasn't an unrepentant killer, I would say that he was like an extreme version of Flash. Did you just make a crack at me? Flash asked incredulously, only to receive a stone-faced stare in return. There were a few moments of silence before Superman spoke, are we all in favor of helping protect Princess Xana from Uzu? Everyone nodded their agreement, the question was just a formality, as they would obviously help, but it needed to be said. Xana's face showed some carefully faked relief and she spoke to them with a fake grudging tone before moving away, thank you. Once the horned woman was gone, Batman turned towards the one member of the League that had remained silent the entire time, Jean, was she telling the truth? I cannot say, her mind is completely shielded, if I wasn't looking at her, I would say that she wasn't even there, the Martian replied. Strange for a princess to have that kind of mental shielding, Batman said suspiciously. It could be training given to the royal family or even a hidden function of those artifacts she mentioned, if I had to guess though, I would say that it is natural to her species, as I have been unable to locate Uzu through telepathy as well, Jean deflected, not ready to call her a liar based on that alone. Batman merely gave a slight grunt in response, a considerable distance away, in the room that they had given her aboard the watchtower, Xana was smirking. Batman was so distrusting and suspicious that he didn't even trust the sense of trust that her subtle genjutsu had inspired in him, that was impressive in a twisted kind of way, he would have fit right in if he had found himself in the elemental nations. Well, he would fit in if he wasn't so hellbent on avoiding killing, and if he could resist the urge to dress up as a bat. Either way, we need to find this guy and stop him as soon as possible, we have no idea what he's going to get up to now, Green Lantern stated firmly getting nods of agreement from everyone. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
This fine young lady is named Emily and she is willing and eager to help you relieve some stress. You seemed like the type to like dark haired girls, so that was what I got you, aren't I a great friend? Best regards, Uzu, P, S. I hear that it's unhealthy to be constantly surrounded by gloom, so I endeavored to brighten things up a bit. Nodding to himself in approval, he teleported to the manor for the other prank, vanishing from the Batcave with a distortion of air. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Some women use them to pleasure themselves if they don't have or don't want a man, though in this case, Uzu left them to imply that Batman is sexually interested in men, he said in a dull monotone, inwardly swearing vengeance on a certain horned blonde for putting him in this situation twice already. I see that even the women are perverse in man's world, she muttered to herself and pointedly looked away. Batman ignored the by-play between his fellow Justice League members and instead picked up the note that Uzu had left next to the dildos. This juvenile prank actually upset him less than what had been done to the Batcave, though it didn't mean he was happy about it. I left these in case you were of a more, fruity persuasion. P. S. If Batgirl is there with you, then remember that sharing is caring. P. P. S. Actually, never mind, I'll go to her apartment and give her something of her own, something special. We have to get to my apartment. We might be able to catch up to him, Batgirl urged, having read the message as well. Aside from wanting to catch him, she was also rather apprehensive of whatever perverted crap Uzu might leave at her place. Agreed. Batman responded and they made their way there without another word. It was most probably a trap, but they couldn't just ignore it either. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
The memories that the clone had transferred back to him had been worth a good many chuckles, but there was only so long that you could be amused by something like that by yourself. Though the fact that Wonder Woman had been present made the whole thing even funnier, her reaction to his mutant hentai creeper plant had been priceless, even though she had cut the joke short, his clone had been controlling the thing from the closet and would have stopped it from actually doing anything aside from freaking the Bat family out, but seeing them all covered in what Naruto referred to as, hentai juice, had been even more amusing. It made him wish that he had bothered to make clones to observe their reactions to his previous two pranks as well. He and Xana had come across the strange perversions that the humans here, the Japanese especially, had come up with while they were getting to know this world. Xana had facepalmed at the sheer bizarrety of some of it and muttered something uncomplimentary about humans. Naruto thought that a lot of it was hilarious and had made a note of the funnier ones for the future, though some of it even he wouldn't touch. People who got their jollies by getting pissed or shat on disturbed him more than anything he had ever encountered by a large margin. Xana had flat out stated that if they ever encountered someone like that, that she would kill them without hesitation. It was by far the most disgusting thing that she had ever seen or heard of and considering her age, that was saying something. But that was all in the past, in the present Naruto was once again bored. He'd tried to get Xana to have a mental conversation with him so that she could tell him about what was going on in the watchtower, but she was firmly blocking him, the feeling of amusement she had been projecting every time that she had ignored him made him think that she knew how bored he was and was doing it just to mess with him. He knew that she had done a lot more waiting than he had to. But they hadn't been separated like this at the time, not to mention that she was a lot older than him and therefore a lot more patient by sheer necessity. Both of them figured that just leaving a clone on the watchtower would probably be a bad idea, it no doubt had sensors or whatever that would detect if she was suddenly duplicated or replaced by a wood clone or something. At the very least, the waiting would be over soon, while Xana worked on building up some more trust with the Justice League. He was to make a few minor appearances in the next few days and then top it off with another supervillain slaughter to provoke them into a fight. Sighing in boredom, Naruto did something that he hadn't done in a long time. He started meditating, almost right away something became obvious to him. This world was old, far older than the elemental nations had been, having never been able to compare it to anything before, he hadn't noticed just how young his original world was, but now it seemed so ridiculously obvious. The slowly accumulating natural energy was very thick, though the various cities and deserts dotting the world counteracted that somewhat. As he narrowed his focus to his immediate area, he noticed a life signature that was somehow both human and plant-like moving around in an area that he recognized as a spot where he had grown a few mokaton trees just for kicks, trees which were definitely not native to the area, it amused him to think that it would probably confuse the hell out of some botanist in the future. He hadn't taken time to closely inspect her life signature when he'd met her in Arkham, but he was sure that it was Poison Ivy and she was apparently searching for him. Naruto grinned to himself, it was either see what she wanted or wait until boredom compelled him into another wave of pranks. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
he said with a short hand wave and then placed his hands back behind his head and closed his eyes. Poison Ivy felt rather nonplussed by the lazy greeting and responded awkwardly, Hi. Have a seat, he offered, roots rising up to form another, similar chair right next to the one he was lounging on. Though fascinated by the fact that the roots didn't seem to be attached to any actual trees, she didn't make any fuss over it, getting comfortable in the offered seat instead. This is remarkably comfortable, she commented, that's the idea, he agreed, I wasn't expecting company so I don't have much to offer you, but there's water in that pod over there if you're thirsty, Naruto added and pointed at a nearby branch from which a bulging pod was hanging. Feeling slightly disturbed by the completely genial atmosphere and the clear disregard for her as a threat, Ivy used her own powers over plants to move the branch closer so that she could take a few mouthfuls of the surprisingly refreshing water. The only thing it garnered her was an amused look that she couldn't match for very long, no matter how much she wanted to, she couldn't look at the creepy slitted gaze without becoming unnerved. So, she started awkwardly, not really knowing how to start a conversation. She'd sought him out because her curiosity over his powers had become uncontrollable, but it wasn't going the way that she had thought it would, she'd figured that he would have taken control of the conversation and she would get to learn a few things in the process, normally she wouldn't have walked into a situation where she would be so heavily disadvantaged, but she felt that it was safe enough to do since he'd already spared her life once. Yes? He drawled with a smirk, finding her discomfort rather amusing. She huffed irritably at his tone and decided to just push her discomfort aside, you're doing this on purpose aren't you? You got me, he admitted, I was actually feeling really bored and you came at just the right time to save me from it, I couldn't resist messing with you a bit. Well I'm so glad to be used as amusement for you, she retorted with some sarcasm. You make it sound so dirty, he teased, if anyone heard you saying it like that, they would think I keep you around on a leash or something, not that I'd be opposed to seeing you in a leash if you're into that kind of thing. A hint of color rose to her cheeks but she refused to get flustered so easily so she merely huffed at him again, pervert. You're damn right I'm a pervert, was the proud reply. You're not at all like I thought you'd be based on the first time we met, she said after getting over her minor shock at his shameless response. An easy mistake to make I'm sure, he told her soothingly, I was carrying a bloodstained sword at the time after all. The words caused her to glance at the sword that was leaning against a nearby tree, looking incredibly innocuous for an item that had taken the lives of some of the most dangerous men on the planet. How's your friend doing? He asked suddenly, she's, getting better I think, I'm not sure what the joker did to her, but it left her dependent on him to a large degree, she seems to be pulling herself together though. That's good, it's always a shame to see a pretty girl so screwed up. Just pretty girls? She asked dryly, well, I suppose it'd be a shame for anyone to be that screwed up, but you may have picked up on the fact that I've got a bit of a soft spot for cute girls, Naruto admitted. Ivy let out a small snort at that, from what she could see, he had more than just a bit of a soft spot. So Pamela, she raised an eyebrow at the use of her real name, but made no issue of it, should we talk about what nice weather we're having next, or are you going to get to the point of your visit? She took a deep breath and got to the point, as he had suggested, your powers. You're talking about my wood release I'm guessing? If that's what you call your ability with plants, she confirmed. Yes, what about it? He drawled, smirking at her in amusement. How did you get it? The redhead pressed, stole it from a dead man, he replied blithely. Blinking in surprise at the odd answer, she continued her questioning, who? Senju Hashirama, Pamela frowned, the name being completely unfamiliar, it sounded Japanese, but that didn't mean anything to her, she thought that she knew about every noteworthy botanist or anyone who wielded powers even the slightest bit similar to hers, I've never heard of him. I would have died of shock if you did, he was openly grinning at her now. You're not really going to tell me anything are you? She deadpanned. I'm quite sure that you didn't really expect me to, he countered, still grinning. How about telling me why you think it's useless to defend nature then? Pamela said, going for a different angle. Ooh, a philosophical discussion. I haven't had one of those in years, Naruto answered with some excitement, but what gave you the idea that I think it's useless to defend nature? You said that no matter what I do, my impact is going to be minimal, she argued. Well of course it's going to be minimal, you're only going to live for a short while after all, no matter how much you manage to achieve, it probably won't take more than 200 or so years at the most for it all to be wiped away, that's the way it is for mortals. Not if I can get rid of all the humans, she muttered darkly. 
I strongly doubt your ability to wipe out six billion humans, Naruto said with dry amusement, and even if you did, there's plenty of aliens out there who would be more than willing to take over for them. Fine then, how would you defend nature? She asked challengingly. If I was in your shoes, I would try to use your unique position as being able to commune with nature as a rallying point for the various environmentalist organizations, get them more credibility, your illustrious criminal career may have been a quick and easy way to do things, but in the long term it's just made you out to be a psychopath. That would never work, she scoffed back, the world leaders only see nature as a thing to be exploited, environmentalist groups are being humored at best while they continue to destroy entire forests in their greed. I'll give you that, they really are overdoing it with the deforestation and there are no doubt plenty of people that would try to get you to use your powers to grow more forests for them to cut down. Pamela's face twisted in disgusted horror at the mere thought of it. Honestly, there aren't any good answers, humans are pretty stupid creatures by nature, if everyone had simply focused on protecting what they have instead of trying to take from others, there would have been no need for war, but that's just wishful thinking. Pamela looked oddly at the horned blonde, who had apparently gone on something of a tangent at the end there and now seemed lost in thought. So what, you're saying I should just give up hope? She asked with some heat in her tone. Hum. Oh no, not at all, I'm just saying that I don't have the answer. The only way to really prevent people from doing stupid things is to either lock them all up or wipe them out, but that's not really a solution. They lapsed into silence for a while, each lost in their own thoughts, Pamela started to feel a bit depressed after the conversation she just had, most of the time she avoided thinking of the enormity of the task she'd set for herself, but it had all been brought up during their talk. Despite her powers, she was just one person, there was no way that she would be able to keep nature safe all over the world, at best, she would be able to safeguard a single, small area and even then only if the rest of humanity didn't make a concerted effort to destroy it. I could take it away you know, if you wanted, Naruto said softly. Take what away? She asked in confusion, you powers, I'm pretty sure that I could turn you back into a normal human and you wouldn't carry this burden anymore, he explained, causing her jaw to drop in shock. He waited patiently while she gathered her wits and pondered whether she hated her condition or not. If you can do that, why didn't you already do it? You killed just about everyone else in Arkham, but you didn't want to kill me and Harley because we were women you could have just taken away my powers instead of letting me go and risking that I would go back to being a villain, she managed to say, her tone still stunned. Naruto raised an eyebrow at her, seeing that she had apparently misunderstood his actions, I didn't spare you because you're girls, if I felt that you were the type to do evil just for the hell of it, then I would have killed you regardless of that. But I've killed people before and so has Harley, she said back, honestly confused. I'm not some uptight superhero in a silly outfit, he retorted dryly. I don't see anything wrong with killing as long as it serves a purpose, I'll grant you that Harley didn't really have a purpose, but it's not her fault that the stupid clown drove her insane and I gambled on her ability to recover. You however, he trailed off and looked at her penetratingly, do you have something to protect? Frowning in confusion at the seeming non sequitur, she responded slowly, you already know I do, I want to stop humans from destroying nature. Naruto nodded, having expected that answer, tell me. What kind of people do you think I've been killing? Criminals obviously, she replied, by now, everyone had heard of the horned man that remorselessly cut down criminals by the dozens. Not all of them were criminals you know, he revealed. You've killed the innocent too? She asked with a deeply confused frown, that would make absolutely no sense based on what she knew about him. They might have been innocent in the eyes of the law at the time, but that excuse doesn't work on me, Naruto explained. Huh. She said, even more confused, if a man was intending to rape a woman but hasn't actually done it yet, what would the police do? He asked. Nothing, unless they had incontrovertible proof, she answered, her tone slightly bitter, because she knew that you couldn't find any proof for intent to rape. All the supposed, innocents, I've killed have been would-be rapists and the like, I've even made sure to make their deaths extra painful, because rape is the kind of act where there is no such thing as, extenuating circumstances, he finished with a grin. Seeing that grin made Pamela shudder slightly, it was easy to see that he was proud of what he'd done and wouldn't feel guilty about it even if the world burned because of it, given his peculiar fondness of everything cute and female, it was understandable but it was still a bit disturbing, not that she minded if he took out the trash, but the easy way that he dismissed the worth of those he killed was an unpleasant reminder of how close she'd been to dying at his hands. 
But what does this have to do with why you didn't take away my powers before? Naruto sighed a bit, seeing that she didn't quite get it. Because you're not a bad person Pamela, even if your methods tend to cause a bit too much collateral damage, he said pointedly, making her shift a bit uncomfortably under his stare, your ability to commune with nature is a powerful gift and you could do a lot with it, I wasn't going to lump you together with rabid animals like the Joker, if he had any sense in his head, then tall, dark and pointy-eared would have killed that nutcase years ago. Pamela couldn't help an amused snort at how he referred to Batman, but decided to focus on another thing that he said. If you think that my ability is a gift, then why would you offer to take it away? Everything has a price and I offered just in case you didn't want to pay it anymore. Well thank you, but I'd like to keep my powers, she told him, feeling a real sense of gratitude that he wasn't trying to force anything on her, she was quite sure that if someone like Batman was in his position that she would already be powerless and locked up on top of it. After a few moments of silence, another question rose up in her mind, what price did you pay for your power? Naruto's eyebrows rose in amusement at the question, having not expected it at all, my mortality. You're immortal? The redhead blurted out in surprise. Very, he confirmed, even more amused, that doesn't sound like much of a price, actually it sounds more like you got two great things without having to pay any price at all, she said skeptically. Really? Just try to imagine what it would be like to live for a thousand years, ten thousand years, a million years, a billion years. She did so, thinking of all the amazing things that she would be able to see and experience, having enough time to do everything and learn everything, with that kind of time she would certainly be able to find a way to keep nature safe. Of course, it also meant that she would continue to linger long after she accomplished everything that she set out to do, any friends she made would grow old and die, if she ever found a way around her inability to have children, then they too would die, even if she didn't find a way, she would certainly eventually adopt a child, and they would die. Thinking even further into the future made her realize that even the nature that she wanted to protect so desperately would wither away while she lingered on and was forced to watch helplessly as it happened, she couldn't help a shudder at the thought, that kind of incomprehensible weight of years would crush her and she knew it. With that perspective, it was suddenly obvious why he thought her approach to be flawed, in the long run, she would accomplish nothing except frustrate herself by butting heads with tall, dark and pointy-eared, as Uzu had called him. I see your point but you can still be killed can't you, even if you don't age? She asked the blonde, feeling an uncommon bit of sympathy for him, it was decidedly odd, hoping that someone can be killed because you didn't wish them to suffer an eternity of listless boredom the likes of which she couldn't even imagine. Nope, he denied cheerfully, even if my body is atomized, I'll just regenerate a new one. You seem remarkably cheerful for someone doomed to live forever, she said dryly. I've only been immortal for ten years, so you can hardly blame me for not being bummed about it quite yet, he pointed out with a grin. How old are you anyway? She asked curiously, isn't it impolite to ask a lady her age? He asked back with an amused grin, remembering his conversation with Batman's butler. That doesn't seem like a problem in this case, she deadpanned. Naruto resisted the urge to pout at the fact that she hadn't said that he wasn't a lady and thus denied him the chance to use the same gag again. I'm 32 if you must know. I expected you to be older for some reason, Pamela said musingly. You haven't seen how immature I act most of the time, so it's understandable, Naruto replied sagely, getting an incredulous look at the blunt admission. A comfortable silence descended again, making Pamela realize that she felt absurdly comfortable with the horned man. Generally she hated people on sheer principle, but Uzu had been nothing but pleasant to her, he'd gotten her out of prison however inadvertent it may have been, spared her life because he saw worth in her despite never having met her before, debated her approach towards protecting nature without any derision and even given her the choice of becoming a normal human woman again. He was an interesting man and she would really like to know what the deal was with his powers, not to mention his horns and other features. He's not exactly hard on the eyes either, she thought musingly as she glanced at him out of the corner of her eye. What would you say to the idea of taking over an island together? She asked out of the blue, making Naruto raise an eyebrow at her again. What brought this on? He asked with an amused grin. The redhead sighed slightly and explained herself. You might have a point about not being able to make a huge difference in the long run, but I still want to keep at least some small part of nature untainted and wild. You obviously have more than enough time on your hands, so I was wondering if you'd want to join me. Harley would get better eventually, but she was definitely a city girl, 
The isolation wouldn't suit her, so she didn't expect the bubbly blonde to join her, Uzu though. Uzu probably wouldn't mind it and they could create all sorts of marvelous new plants together. How scandalous. Naruto teased with his cheek pressed into a palm in a mockery of a shocked expression, trying to tempt a married man into moving in with you. You're married? She blurted out in the same shocked tone as when she'd learned that he was immortal. Indeed, you didn't think that I went after immortality for the sake of power did you? I did it so that I could be with my wife forever, I would consider myself a failure as a husband if I caused her grief by being inconveniently mortal while she was immortal. So this wife of yours is also immortal? Where is she then? Pamela asked, only realizing how rude and insulting she sounded after the words had left her mouth. Naruto paid no heed to the rudeness, he was pretty rude himself after all, instead he gazed at her contemplatively, debating with himself whether he should tell her what he and Zana were doing or not. Can you keep a secret? Of course I can, she asserted. Really? Because if this gets out I'd be pretty upset with you, he warned. I won't tell a soul, my wife is a primordial goddess, which is a very long story that I won't be going into right now, he added the last part when he saw her opening her mouth to question him further on the subject. Anyway, she shared with me something that elevated me to something reasonably close to her in power, though my abilities are still maturing so she still has a considerable edge on me as far as power goes. Seeing her nodding in understanding, Naruto continued explaining, we just finished off a 10-year honeymoon and left our original dimension and came to this one looking for something fun to do. You can yes we can dimension travel, she huffed at his interruption but gestured for him to continue explaining. Anyway, we saw how anal retentive these so-called superheroes were about their no-killing rule and decided to screw with their heads, Xana is even now up on their watchtower, spinning some tall tales about how I'm a ruthless killer that's been hunting her down and that she needs their protection, we're going to lead them on right to the very end just to see the idiotic looks on their faces. Pamela just stared at him for nearly half a minute as she processed the fact that they were apparently amusing themselves by toying with the Justice League. You two are both either really bored, or huge assholes, she stated flatly. Yeah, those two things aren't really mutually exclusive, for myself at least. I've gotta say that I'm a bored asshole, Naruto admitted. She couldn't help chuckling at that, finding his blunt honesty about what kind of person he was to be strangely pleasant. Another thought came up soon after that, since you're apparently happily married, then why are you propositioning every woman you come across? Well, before we were married, Xana insisted that I sleep with other women and I did so even though I didn't understand why, to be honest, I'm still a bit confused about it, but she honestly doesn't care if I sleep with other women especially now since my soul is permanently bound to her. Pamela looked as if she wanted to ask more about that, but Naruto cut her off again, it became bound when she made me immortal, either way, it's not like any woman aside from her could satisfy me, so I keep propositioning women for laughs mostly. Are you saying that you don't believe me capable of satisfying you even though you propositioned me? She asked in a slightly demanding tone, feeling oddly insulted by that. Naruto couldn't help grinning at her, damn right you couldn't. You have no idea what kind of endurance it takes to satisfy me. I think you'd find that I have plenty of endurance, she shot back. Is that so? I don't know how it is in this dimension, but that sounds like a challenge to me and you shouldn't make challenges unless you're willing to have them met. By this point both of them were standing, Naruto grinning down at the much shorter woman while she stared heatedly back at him. Pamela knew that she could still back down from this and he wouldn't hold it against her, on the other hand, he was a man that she found herself liking and he was immune to her poisons, it had been years since she'd had any kind of intimate contact with another person and she was terribly reluctant to waste the opportunity even if it was going to be nothing more than a one night stand. She bit her lip, feeling oddly shy all of a sudden, this would be the first time in years that she would actually be making a move on someone without intending to kill them. Naruto kept still as the small redhead exploratorily slid her hands across his abdomen and chest, reminding himself that she was far more fragile than what he was used to, Xana would be fine no matter how forceful he was, but he could easily kill Pamela by accident if he wasn't careful. Encouraged by the small twitches on the planes of hard muscle, she stepped closer and pressed herself against him, sliding her arms under the white howry, given the height difference between them, her mouth ended up being somewhere at his chest level, which she decided to make use of by running her tongue over his nipple, which drew an approving rumble from his throat. He rolled his shoulders to shake off the howry when she tugged at it, not wanting to distract her by simply allowing it to dissipate out of existence, 
he put his own arms on her back and gently ran a claw over the leafy green outfit she was wearing, cutting it and getting a slight gasp out of her when his chest was suddenly the only thing keeping it up. She turned her head when she heard movement behind her, seeing that the chairs they'd been sitting on earlier had reformed themselves into a wide bed, she didn't resist when he picked her up and carried her over to it, feeling the large bulge in his pants pressing into her. She turned away from him once he set her down on the soft but surprisingly firm mossy covering, slipping the remains of her dress off and then her gloves, including the small crossbow she kept on her right one, it was a good thing that her dress was grown rather than sewn, or she might have been upset at him for cutting it. He pressed himself against her before she could turn around, keeping her facing away as his fingers moved to caress her breasts and gently scraped his teeth over her ear, her breathing deepened under his ministrations and she quickly found herself getting wet. Her eyes widened slightly when he took a deep whiff and the approving rumble he'd been letting out periodically intensified, making her realize that he must be able to smell her arousal, his right hand slid slowly between her legs and gently rubbed her moist opening, drawing it gasp out of her at his skilled manipulation of her erogenous zones. A noise of protest escaped her when he removed his hand after merely a few seconds and brought it to his mouth to lick it. Em, um, poisonous, he rumbled into her ear and pushed her forward so that she was on all fours. What are you doing? She asked breathily when he pulled back to lay a large hand on her right butt cheek, given the bulge that she'd felt throbbing against her the entire time so far, she'd expected him to take his pants off and enter her, but instead he'd pulled away. She had only a moment to think that he'd been turned off by the fact that all of her fluids were toxic before she felt his breath between her legs and realized what he was intending to do. Wait. Not like this, she said quickly and turned over so that she was laying on her back, like this, she finished invitingly, spreading her legs for him. Do you want to grab my horns don't you? He asked with a knowing smirk. She didn't reply, but the way that she looked away with her face turning red was a much more descriptive answer. Still smirking, Naruto decided to surprise her and extended his tongue abnormally far out of his mouth. Her eyes widened in shock at the act what the he young. Her surprised exclamation was cut off when the prehensile appendage slithered inside her and started wrecking havoc on her erogenous nerve clusters. Her hands instantly shot to his horns and used them as handholds to steady herself while her body shuddered under the assault, she was only distantly aware of the fact that several vines wrapped themselves around her legs to keep them from instinctively slamming together. Not long after that, another two vines grabbed her hands, tore them away from his horns and bound them above her head, she wasn't even able to protest her suddenly bound position, too busy as she was gasping for air. With a silent scream she sprayed her release into his mouth, greedily gulping down air while her body continued shuddering as he gave her a final few licks to gather up the last of her release. She was still trying to get her breath back when she felt something being rubbed against her almost painfully sensitive slit. That's never going to fit in me, she gasped out when she saw the size of the male member being steadily lubricated by her previous release, she was not a big woman by any stretch of the imagination and she didn't think she could accommodate something of that size. Seeing her sweating face and slightly afraid expression, he decided to tease her a bit, I thought you said you could handle me? We're barely even done with foreplay and you look ready to pass out on me. That brought a bit of a glare to her face and she tried to get out of the vines, only to discover that they wouldn't respond to her making her realize that the only reason she'd been able to use her powers earlier had been because he had allowed it. Before she could say anything, he laid himself gently over her and rumbled into her ear soothingly, don't worry, I'll be gentle. Not feeling hugely reassured since she could now feel the tip pressing into her, she nevertheless nodded, believing that he would at the very least enter her slowly and listen if she told him to stop. His occasional rumbling deepened into a growl as he slowly pushed into her tight passage, having to struggle against his impulse to simply drive himself into her all the way, the way that she was groaning at his intrusion and straining against the vines holding her wasn't helping his self-control any. Pamela was relieved to see that it wasn't as bad as she'd feared as his tongue had already stretched her a bit, not to mention made certain that she was as lubricated as she could get, but that wasn't to say that it was easy, he had to move excruciatingly slowly to make sure that she got used to his girth before he could move any deeper. Several very frustrating minutes later for Naruto, when he was about two-thirds of the way inside her, she spoke up again, her voice a bit hoarse from the near-constant groaning she'd been doing, that's my limit, I can't take you any deeper. He frowned and pushed just the slightest bit deeper, feeling an obstruction and deciding to listen, all right, he'd never encountered this particular issue with Xana, but then again, his wife could manipulate her own body as she pleased, 
he did however remember hurting one of the smaller women he'd slept with in his earlier years when he'd pushed too deep. Pamela released a tiny sigh of relief and relaxed, having tensed when she'd felt him poking at her cervix, in her current position there was literally nothing that she could have done to stop him if he suddenly decided to be an idiot male and think, but I'm almost there. He pulled out slowly and pushed back inside even slower, making her moan at the pleasant sensation of being so full and very grateful when he stopped a couple of inches away from her cervix to prevent any accidents. It didn't take more than a few minutes of the slow, rhythmic motion to bring her to another orgasm, making her buck her hips upwards at him, her eyes rolled up and she let out a continuous moan when she felt him discharging into her, the forceful spurting as it coated her inner walls enhancing the sensation considerably. Even when she came down from her high, she could still feel him releasing the last few spurts, leaving her feeling bloated, but pleasantly so. So, are you, satisfied? She asked with a tired smirk, looking up at him through the curtain of bright gold hair. Not even close, he responded with an amused grin, we'd need to keep going like this for at least a full day without breaks before that could happen. You can't, be serious. She gasped out incredulously as he pulled out of her, she was just about ready to pass out and he wasn't even slightly tired? Well I am a god, he said smugly and scooped her up off the bed. If you'd made that claim an hour ago, I would have scoffed, she said wryly, and where are you taking me? It's been over thirteen years since I last had sex with a mortal woman, but if I remember correctly, you're going to be sore, he replied without really answering her question and brought her to a small clearing. Before her wide eyes, the earth parted to make a hole and then the walls solidified into smooth stone before becoming overgrown with the same soft moss as the trees before, as a final touch a bench formed and then water began condensing inside it, rapidly filling up the new depression in the ground. I see you're capable of a lot more than just this wood release you've mentioned, she murmured, still staring in shock at the rather comfortable looking natural bathtub. I'd feel pretty stupid calling myself a god if I was a one-trick pony. Naruto admitted with a grin and stuck a foot inside the cool water, raising the temperature until it started steaming. Pamela groaned when he lowered her into the water, which was pleasantly hot, but not so hot that it would scald her. How's the water? He asked, amused at her blissed out expression as she leaned against the edge. Perfect, hang on a second, let me try something new, he said, frowning in concentration. The redhead was just about to ask him what he was doing when she felt the water somehow thicken around her and start massaging her all by itself, without any apparent reason for it. She groaned at the full body massage, damn it Uzu, if you keep pampering me like this I'm not going to want to let you leave. Naruto, what? She looked over at him in confusion. My name, it's Naruto, Uzumaki Naruto, Uzu is just something I made up to make it easier to screw with the underwear brigade. She snorted out a laugh at his name for the Justice League before focusing on the main point of his sentence, Naruto it is. They lapsed into silence for a few minutes, Pamela just enjoying the full body massage and hot water while Naruto distracted himself by keeping the water temperature constant and separating out the semen leaking from the redhead. When she felt herself getting drowsy, she shook her head to clear it and turned to address the horned man again, could you get me back to Harley Naruto? She was sleeping when I left but I don't want to leave her alone for too long right now. No problem, but I don't know where she is, shouldn't you know everything, being a god and all? She said with friendly mockery. I am a god, not the god, he retorted with a smirk. Ten minutes later, they were both dressed and Naruto had at least a general idea of where he needed to teleport in order to get Pamela into an area close to her friend. One more thing before you go, Naruto spoke up, drawing her confused attention, have a souvenir. Pamela stared incredulously at the item he'd just handed to her, it was a t-shirt, with, I slept with a horny god, proudly written over the chest in large font. It is my understanding, that it is customary in this dimension to get captioned t-shirts when you've done something noteworthy, he explained with a wide grin. Has anyone ever told you that you have an incredibly odd and irritating sense of humor? She asked calmly and accepted the t-shirt. Yeah, I get that a lot, Naruto admitted freely. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Naruto answered with a brutally honest assessment. Of course she didn't, she simply isn't capable of performing on the same physical level as we are. Wait a minute. Does that mean that I was disappointing to you before I became a god? Naruto asked suspiciously. Yes, she replied bluntly, making Naruto clutch at his heart in an overdramatic fashion. You have no idea of the years of disappointment I suffered before you were satisfactory. My fragile ego, torn to shreds, he said to her in a pained tone, kneeling on the ground with his head pressed into the dirt, but he was grinning at the melodious laughter that answered his theatrix. To be perfectly honest, you were a great deal better after returning from your training trip, but you've only been truly impressive these last ten years, she soothed, still sounding amused. Oh my, my beloved wife is such a demanding beast in the bedroom he teased back with a mournful tone. I'm demanding in every other room too, as well as outside, she retorted haughtily, making him snort in amusement. So, how are things up there, he asked, changing the subject. Naruto, I'm not going to entertain you with conversation for the next two days, she told him flatly. He sighed at how easily she saw through his attempts at relieving his boredom. If you're so terribly bored, why don't you try reading a book? This world has a lot more literature than the elemental nations did, or if that doesn't work, try the music, there seems to be a truly absurd number of music performers here, so I'm sure you'll find something that is to your liking, she suggested with some exasperation. Naruto perked up at that, I didn't even think of that, thanks. Of course you didn't husband, she mocked with a patronizing tone and closed their mind link. Naruto frowned, feeling as if his intelligence had just been insulted, but he shrugged it off as unimportant. He wasn't much of a reader, so there was music to sample. Naruto realized one important fact about his sudden desire to learn about the music of this world. Music stores weren't open at night and it was night. Actually, was there even such a thing as a music store? He knew that the people in this dimension had figured out how to record music on objects, but according to Zana, the idiot whose soul she'd ripped out listened to music mostly through something called, YouTube. What the hell was a YouTube and how does one get on it? That was the problem with just taking the knowledge from someone's head, if you didn't have context then you wouldn't know what the hell it was about, and rather inconveniently, neither one of them had any interest in anything except language at the time, which meant everything else had received only cursory inspection, if it received any at all. Naruto had a sinking suspicion that Zana wouldn't have used the human path again to make this easier even if she hadn't been on the watchtower, no doubt she'd find his fumbling around the subject amusing. Either way, he couldn't even fumble around it during the night, which meant waiting for the morning and that was quite a ways off. He didn't actually need to sleep anymore, though he usually did so just because he enjoyed it, but he couldn't do that right now either, having sex with Pamela had done nothing to calm him down, quite the contrary actually. He was horny as hell, his godlike body used to treating a single orgasm as the start of foreplay rather than anything else, unfortunately, he wasn't really in the mood to go screwing 15 or so random women, either seduced or paid for, that he'd never met before in order to scratch that particular itch and Xana was obviously unavailable. What he wouldn't do to be able to teleport to her, bend her over and pound her until he was satisfied. Sighing at his predicament, he took flight and headed for Gotham, maybe something interesting would be happening that would distract him. He could always go to some other city if it wasn't, it would be time to move on soon anyway. Technically, he should have been messing around with Superman in Metropolis already anyway, but Batman had just been so grimly serious all the time that he just had to mess with the man more than he'd planned. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
He already knew that he was going to interrupt what was obviously a theft, not that he gave a damn if she stole stuff from a museum, as far as he was concerned it was full of useless junk and she was welcome to rob it blind if she so wished. He'd been hoping to run into her for a while, but she'd apparently been keeping a low profile, so this was not a chance to be wasted, even if it was only making him even more horny. The question was, how should he do it? Should he go for a casual approach, just stroll up to her with a nonchalant, what's up pussycat? Or should he got the path of the pervert and do something more extreme? In the eternal battle between cool laziness and absolute perversion, there can be only one victor. Naruto rolled his eyes at himself, he must be more bored than he thought if he was making his own thoughts sound that dramatic. Either way, in his current turned on condition, the choice was obvious, though to be fair, it would have been obvious even if he hadn't been turned on. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
sure. It's not like any of the crap in there is actually important, he shrugged uncaringly. If you want, I'll clean out the entire museum for you, including the benches. The crap you're talking about are priceless pieces of art worth hundreds of millions of dollars in total, she said dryly. One man's priceless art is another man's crap from a yard sale, he countered sagely, grinning again. Catwoman sighed, her lips twitching with amusement. His logic was both ridiculous and unassailable. Cleary, she had been worried about him for no reason, he seemed to not give a damn about thieves at all. Very well then, if you can get me the cat's eye emerald I'll consider forgiving you, she told him, pointing at the large green emerald through the skylight. That ugly green paperweight? He asked, staring at the object lying on an ostentatious purple pillow, if Naruto was honest with himself, he thought that the pillow was more interesting than the rock. Selina closed her eyes and took a deep breath, willing herself not to react to that sentence, yes, that extremely beautiful green jewel, well, she mostly didn't react. Personally I think your ass is a lot more beautiful than this thing, but here you go, she heard him say and opened her eyes, goggling in shock at the gem sitting in his extended palm. How? How did you get it that fast? She whisper screamed, having confirmed that it was the real deal and even more strangely, there was set of anal beads and a tube of lubricant sitting on the pillow where the gem used to be, that was probably going to upset and offend some people in the morning. A super secret technique, Naruto said mysteriously. Substitution technique, E rank, supplementary, most basic spacetime technique available, so basic in fact, that most people didn't even realize it was a spacetime technique. Or in this case, the B rank variant only available to highly skilled users of spacetime techniques that allowed for the switching of two objects instead of the user and an object. Though it was debatable whether his casual violation of the spacetime continuum really counted as a technique at this point. Catwoman deflated like a balloon, now that's just taking all the fun out of it, she thought that she would get to watch him screw up and trip every alarm in the museum, she didn't really expect the police to catch him, but it would have still been funny to mock him about it at least now that she wasn't scared of him anymore. Why do you want this silly rock anyway? He asked and tossed it to her negligently. I've got a thing for cat-themed jewels, she admitted as she pocketed the emerald. Naruto raised an amused eyebrow and suddenly developed a devious idea. What are you doing? She asked warily when she saw him shake out his arms and then place them in front of himself, after which one lit up with blue fire and the other with red. Creation of all things, Naruto intoned in English for her benefit and a fist-sized kitten made of pure diamond appeared in his hands. You didn't actually need the Rinnegan for that particular technique, as long as you were good enough with yin-yang release and diamonds were ironically enough one of the simpler things to make with it, due to the fact that they were made up of exactly one element. How? She whispered in shock and reached to touch the unbearably cute and incredibly beautiful diamond kitten to make sure it was real, not to mention that it had to be the largest diamond in the world at this point. I'm a god, creating crap out of thin air is no big deal for me, he said pompously, grinning at the look she was giving him. All right, I forgive you, she said and eagerly reached for the kitten, only for him to move it out of reach. Nah uh uh, if you want this kitten, you'll have to do something for me, he teased. Forget it, she said flatly, crossing her arms over her chest. The only reason she even wanted it was because it was a cute diamond kitten, if it hadn't been for that, she wouldn't have had too much interest in a jewel that she didn't have to steal, there was no fun or challenge in that. Naruto blinked at her, surprised at her instant response, that was fast, you didn't even hear what I want yet. I'm not going to have sex with you for it, I'm not a whore. You dirty pervert, that wasn't what I was going to ask for, he teased with a mocking grin. Oh, she said, feeling embarrassed, what were you going to ask for then, and I'm not a pervert. Well firstly, let me just point out that you're wearing a leather catsuit and if that isn't kinky then I don't know what is. Secondly, if you happen to have any S&M urges, I'm perfectly willing to participate in any role, I can even provide the chains and you can bring the whips. The grin kept spreading wider over his face the redder her face got, but he kept on talking. Thirdly, I was going to ask you to help me find out what kind of music I like. She was once more left staring at him in shock and spoke disbelievingly, why the hell would you need my help for that? I'm not from this world and I've got no idea where to start, the only thing I really know is that you can find music on something called, YouTube, which sounds like some kind of lesbian sex toy now that I think about it. She rolled her eyes at him, figuring that this must be normal for him, she was starting to wonder why she'd ever been afraid of him if he was this harmless. 
it's YouTube, not YouTube, you, as opposed to I, not you, the letter. Well, that doesn't make any more sense to be honest, it just makes it sound like you're talking about some guy's dick, Naruto interjected. How do you even function as a person if everything is one giant perversion to you? She asked dryly. Pretty well for the most part, except for the times when I accidentally scare women into thinking that I'm going to rape them, he replied cheekily. Anyway, YouTube is a website where you can find just about anything, music included, she explained, forcefully redirecting the conversation back on topic. Website? He said more than asked, frowning in thought, I think I've heard or read that somewhere, but I'm guessing it has nothing to do with spiderwebs. Catwoman facepalmed at his cluelessness, even if the horns and other stuff hadn't been a clue, she would have definitely figured him to be an alien at this point, no, a website is a place on the internet. And the internet has nothing at all to do with actual nets right? He asked dryly. You seem to be getting the idea, well then oh mistress, teach me of the interwebs and I'll surrender my pussy to you, he said to her with a grin and held out the diamond kitten for her to take. I can't believe I'm saying this, but come with me to my apartment, she muttered, garnering a snicker from the blonde. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
The lack of men on that island had led to a very specific type of community and their immortality meant that the society moved glacially slowly and no doubt placed a lot of emphasis on being dignified and respectful. The long lives and lack of opposite gender meant that there was a distinct lack of sexual overtones in Amazonian society, as noted from the pranks that she had gotten caught in. Naruto may not have seen it, but she had, having been observing it with the Byakugan and being much amused by their reactions. Wonder Woman was a serious prude through no fault of her own. There was potential there, a lot of it, normally she would let Naruto pull his pranks while she enjoyed the outcomes, but since he wasn't here, she would need to amuse herself. It would once more need some pretty decent acting to make it believable though, fortunately she'd gotten a lot of practice doing that lately. Diana, I have a request to make of you and I hope that you will not hold it against me if you decline, she said as she rose from her chair, forcing a blush onto her cheeks, her voice also held just the slightest of unease. Of course I will not hold it against you, please make your request, Diana responded, puzzled by the reluctance exhibited by the horned woman, who was usually so confident in her speech. Xana didn't reply immediately, but sat next to the Amazon on the bed and placed her hands on her shoulders. Back at home, it was common for unmarried women to engage in certain activities with each other and I miss it terribly, I imagine that it is the same for you, being separated from your sister Amazons and being unable to find any relief among these strange people and their strange customs, she purred into Diana's ear, suppressing a grin when she felt a tremor going through the other woman at her clear insinuation. Any second now, she expected that the Amazon would bolt, her face on fire from embarrassment at the perceived misunderstanding, that would no doubt be followed by an extremely awkward conversation, for Diana anyway, followed by continued awkwardness as she brushed up against her at every opportunity and aimed mournful longing looks at the dark-haired woman every time she saw her. You have no idea how glad I am to hear you say that, Diana said with obvious relief in her voice, closed her eyes and kissed the horned woman. Which was fortunate as the shocked look on Xana's face would be highly suspicious considering the fact that she had been the one to initiate this situation. Apparently she'd been mistaken about the theoretical prudishness of the Amazons, they were just very private about what they did with each other, there hadn't been the slightest hint of this during their conversation. Xana's mind raced with blistering speed as she tried to adapt to the new situation, she hadn't had a plan backfire on her this spectacularly in well over a thousand years. Well except for that one time when a certain idiot human had been insane enough to summon the death god to seal her into his own son, but that had turned out to be the best thing to ever happen to her, so it didn't count. She could already hear Naruto laughing himself stupid when she told him about this. Mastering her shock, she returned the kiss to keep from screwing the whole plan up and considered her options. She couldn't make excuses and back out, because she had been the one to suggest this in the first place, it would be too suspicious. She couldn't use mind-altering genjutsu, as that was one of the things that she and Naruto had agreed to put a ban on, there would be no point in trying to have fun if you were just going to mind-control your way out of everything, even the minor trust inspiring genjutsu when she'd asked for their help, had been pushing it. A new idea began taking shape as the kiss continued for a few seconds longer. Naruto would have been crushed if she slept with another man, but he wouldn't mind if it was with a woman, he'd be more upset that he hadn't been there. It was incredibly hypocritical of him and he knew it, but Xana didn't mind as long as he was honest about it instead of making excuses, excuses were the refuge of the weak, she hadn't been lying when she said that mortals were disappointing, the men even more so than the women, she'd only slept with a handful of them before meeting Naruto and they had been just as disappointing as any other, no stamina worth mentioning whatsoever. The women had at least somewhat known what they were doing, but the same stamina problem applied, leaving her disappointed and horny by the time they couldn't keep going anymore, it had actually been centuries since she'd last bothered with sex before taking Naruto's virginity. She started returning the kiss with more eagerness as she switched mental gears and reworked her original plan to make the Amazon incredibly uncomfortable around her. She would have to take a very different approach, but it could still be done and it would keep the greater plan that she and Naruto were running intact. It would quite possibly improve it even. It would certainly be more hilarious than her initial idea of flustering the woman with her advances, Diana would probably feel a bit betrayed when everything was revealed, but Xana wasn't too worried about that, as she wasn't the type to have a whole lot of empathy for anyone other than herself or Naruto. The Amazon was a very beautiful woman, which was a plus even if Xana wasn't overmuch attracted to her and since she had a lot more endurance than a regular human, she might actually be capable of taking the edge off her arousal, 
the chance was remote in the extreme, but it could happen. All of this was considered in the few seconds that it took for Diana to break the kiss and look back into Xana's eyes, which now showed eagerness instead of the shock she felt at accidentally guessing at the Mischira's dirty little secret. Xana figured that the Mischira wasn't an island full of lesbians or even bisexuals, it was just an island full of immortal women that had only other women as company, quite a few of them probably had become lesbians from sheer lack of choice, but most of them were simply sexually frustrated women with a limited choice in partners, given the chance, many would likely find men that they were attracted to, but that chance didn't exist on their isolated little island. Of course, this was all guesswork, for all she knew the majority of them were entirely asexual, with Diana being part of a minority that hid their activities, but it was mightily doubtful, more likely, having sex with other women was commonplace, but not spoken of in public. It wasn't very surprising for such a thing to happen really, even an island full of men in the same situation would have likely turned out the same eventually, despite the fact that men in general seemed a lot more resistant to the idea of having intercourse with their own gender than women. At first I thought that Shayera might be interested, but she is a soldier and her society is too much like man's world, she has no concept of finding relief in the arms of a fellow woman. Well, it is her loss, come, let us share our cultures, the horned goddess purred suggestively, her hand sliding gently across the Amazon's back and neck. And let Aphrodite enhance our pleasures, Diana added, catching on to the unsubtle innuendo and leaning in for another kiss. Ah yes, them, Xana could feel the blessings placed on Diana's armor and weapons by the godlings that protected her island, she could also feel the impotent anger being directed at her for the game that she was playing with their favorite. Do calm yourself little godlings, at the worst she will come out of this with some humiliation and a lesson in being too trusting, and perhaps a few screaming orgasms, the psychic message startled them, as they had apparently thought themselves undetected, how very amusing. Their return messages went unheard as the temporary mind link was cut off, she had no interest in speaking to them, they were far lesser in strength than her and Naruto, though her husband would probably be unaware of them in his still immature godhood, the problem was that they were aware of their own inferiority and they were rather skittish about it, unused as they were to being outclassed, this made them terribly boring. The Shinju had been a power of old, the raw power of creation that should never have gained sentience but had done so through the idiotic meddling of overly curious gods and power-hungry mortals. With the limited, bestial intellect of the Ten Tails destroyed and replaced by her own true sentience. There was no real limit to what she could do aside from the scale of her own perception, she may not be omniscient or omnipresent the way that many humans in this world imagined their non-existent creator god to be, but she was virtually omnipotent and thus far more powerful than the Olympians that Diana so revered, she did still need to practice some things in order to master them, but destroying stuff was easy, which seemed to be the biggest measuring stick for power among gods anyway. It was easy to paint a canvas entirely black, but something else entirely to create a masterpiece. Completely ignorant of the fact that her gods were being mocked, Diana cast off the bathrobe, leaving her naked as she moved her mouth down Xana's neck and pushed aside the horned woman's clothing. Clawed fingers carefully slid over the Amazon's breasts and nipples while her lips moved even further down to grasp a revealed nipple and gently sucked on it even as her tongue slid across it. Xana made noises of encouragement as she pulled off her clothes and threw them on the ground, wordlessly telling the Amazon that she was doing something right, the dark head lowered further when she placed her hand on top of it and gently pushed down to make it clear what she wanted. Diana paused just before her mouth reached the horned woman's nether regions, Seeing that the slit was just as hairless as she kept her own and already glistening with arousal, she wondered what this alien woman would taste like in comparison to her sister's. Xana developed a slight smile as Diana put her mouth to work on her crotch, making an appreciative sound at the way she tasted, she was a goddess, she was damn sure going to taste better than anyone else. Not more than half a minute later, a small frown had replaced the smile, she had to give the dark-haired woman points for enthusiasm, but this was seriously substandard, Though obviously no stranger to the act, Diana wasn't very experienced either, either that, or Naruto had spoiled her, most likely both, Diana certainly couldn't compare to the acrobatics that Naruto was capable of with his tongue. Seeking to correct the situation was much as possible, she gripped the dark head of hair moving between her legs and tangled her fingers in it, retracting her claws as she did so, she didn't want to accidentally lobotomize the Amazon, or scalp her for that matter. Harder, she commanded and pushed her hips upwards. Diana tried to raise her head to ask a question, but had her head pushed firmly back down. 
You're too gentle. Push harder with your tongue, Zana elaborated impatiently. Diana did so and was pleased at the approving growl she received for it. Good, good, now scrape your teeth across the nub above my entrance. Stick two fingers inside me and hook them. Yes that's it, now rub that slightly coarser part in time with your licks. Yes, keep going like that, now clamp your lips around that nub and squeeze. Diana was relieved when her bed partner grunted and climaxed, releasing a small rush of fluids over her tongue and fingers. She had done this before and liked to think that she'd always been able to pleasure whichever of her sister Amazons shared her bed, but just now she'd felt like a complete beginner, someone that needed constant instructions in order to be any good, the horned woman was demanding and rather domineering as well, something that none of her sisters had been. This was a common practice on the Mischira, it wasn't really spoken of much, but just about every woman on the island found a partner at least once or twice a month to share a bed with. Diana had been in man's world for just over seven months already and had built up quite a lot of tension, especially since she'd left in direct defiance of her mother's wishes, it had become immediately apparent that she wouldn't be able to relieve herself of that tension in the way that she was used to, which was why she'd been so pleased to find that Zana's people had the same practice. Once Zana let go of her head, Diana situated herself on the bed and eagerly spread her legs, biting her lip in anticipation of the coming release. Well aren't you eager? The goddess asked R.H. erotically, observing the wet opening presented to her. Don't make me wait any longer, Diana whispered, oh, I'm sure you'll find me to be far better than your sisters and well worth waiting for, Zana replied with a smirk, she'd long since lost her aversion about performing oral sex thanks to Naruto and she intended to use it as the first step of this minor side game. Diana's breath hitched and eyes widened as the extremely long tongue that Batman had mentioned Uzu having extended from the horned woman's mouth and slithered around her opening teasingly, making her buck her hips upwards in a vain attempt to bring it closer. She shuddered as it slid over her clitoris and probed into her vaginal tunnel like a serpent looking for a dark hole to hide in, her legs twitched and threatened to close against her will when it began stimulating her erogenous zones with ever-increasing vigor, but found themselves held by strong hands, she hadn't considered it before, but clearly Xana was very powerful physically. Diana kept her jaw firmly locked to prevent any loud moans or screams from escaping her as that wonderfully agile tongue drove her mad with pleasure the likes of which none of her sisters had ever been capable of giving her. Her hands twisted the sheets desperately, she would have grabbed the horns but wasn't sure if it would be considered offensive or not, so she kept her hands away. Couple that with months without release and it was no surprise that it took a mere few minutes before her body was shuddering with a powerful orgasm. Great Hera, I never knew, that it was possible, to feel such pleasure, Diana panted with her eyes closed, her body glistening with sweat. Don't think that you can just fall asleep now, I am far from satisfied, Zana said sternly. Diana opened her eyes when she felt the bed shifting, just in time to see the horned woman's crotch descending on her face. Wait. I am MPH she tried to protest, but was cut off when her mouth was covered. Shut up and start licking, Xana commanded, grabbing the Amazon princess by the hair so that she couldn't turn her head away. Diana tried to protest the treatment, but got cut off when two fingers on Xana's other hand were shoved into her vaginal opening. Are you so weak that it takes but a single session to tire you? I expected better from you Amazon? The taunt combined with the fingers probing her still sensitive tunnel provoked Diana into licking the wet slit pressed into her face, though there was a glare on her face at being treated so submissively. What's with that look on your face, don't like hearing that you couldn't satisfy me? Zana said with a challenging smirk aimed at the furiously licking woman whose head she had pinned between her legs. Diana knew a challenge when she heard one and tried to throw the horned woman off her so that she could take control but had the strength robbed from her limbs as another wave of pleasure washed over her when another sweet spot inside her was hit. For a warrior, you seem rather easily defeated, Xana once again taunted, withdrew her fingers and shifted focus on the Amazon's engorged clitoris, immediately she started using Naruto's old trick of stimulating the nub by swirling chakra around it. Unable to muster enough strength in her arms to throw the other woman off due to what was being done between her legs, Diana resorted to lashing her tongue at the now soaking wet slit with more force. Better, but so clumsy, Zana commented, frustrating Diana with how composed she sounded. Diana's legs began shuddering and closing all by themselves because of the stimulation being applied to her, causing Zana to snap at her commandingly, accompanied by a glare. Keep your legs spread. 
Diana obeyed and forced her legs apart despite their protests, she already felt terribly inadequate compared to the other woman and she had no wish to seem like she couldn't even control her own limbs. This continued for several minutes longer until Diana began to feel a great pressure building up inside her, bringing her ever closer to the breaking point, but always held at bay because the horned woman would not allow her to climax, the sensation was starting to be so intense that she couldn't even tell anymore if she was feeling pleasure or pain as she moaned helplessly into Zana's groin. Let's see if you can handle this Amazon. The words filled Diana with foreboding about what was going to follow and she tried to prepare herself by instinctively tensing up. It didn't help in the slightest when Xana grabbed her engorged clitoris between her thumb and index finger and pinched it slightly, that alone would have been enough to trigger an orgasm, but she had also added a little trick that Naruto had cooked up for her benefit recently. In addition to the swirling chakra already providing powerful stimulation, a weak electrical current was channeled directly into the nerves, causing them to surge with a sudden explosion of raw sensation. Diana screamed at the top of her lungs into the wet slit covering her mouth, her vision going white as her body was trapped somewhere between agonizing pain and mind-numbing euphoria, she wasn't even aware of the jet of liquid rocketing from between her legs and soaking the wall halfway across the room. Her head lolled limply as she gulped down air and tried to remember what her name was and what was going on. Open your mouth Amazon. A familiar voice commanded and she obeyed without bothering to question why. There was something familiar about being told what to do by that voice. A pleasant tasting liquid streamed into her mouth and she swallowed it unthinkingly. Well, at least you know that you should always swallow, the same voice commented, this time with an amused tone. The bed under her shifted and she felt a pair of lips brush her ear, causing her to shiver involuntarily, you're quite the squirter Diana, how, perverse. Diana opened her eyes and squinted at the bleary white-haired, dusky-skinned figure that moved across the room to pick up something white from the floor. Well it was interesting, but maybe next time I won't have to finish myself off, good night," Zana said calmly as she dressed and then quietly padded out of the room. It took Diana a good twenty or so seconds to make sense of the words and she forced herself up on her elbows so that she could take stock situation without passing out. Her entire body was dripping with sweat, as if a barrel of the stuff had been poured over her, even her hair was a sweaty tangled mess while most of her face and the areas around her mouth in particular were soaked with Xana's release, many of her muscles, especially the ones in her legs, were spasming uncontrollably no matter how much she tried to control them and she could practically feel her consciousness slipping away. The room itself had a puddle at the wall directly across from her and the wall itself was still dripping, the bed under her was also rather soggy, both from sweat and other fluids. Diana really wanted to clean this mess up, especially the puddle, and maybe set fire to the sheets she was lying on, unfortunately, unconsciousness refused to be denied any longer and she collapsed on her thoroughly soiled bed. In a few minutes, the natural hardiness of her people would have allowed her to reclaim at least enough strength to wash herself and clean up the worst of the mess, her nervous system however, had been completely overloaded and her body decided that it was time to take a break. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
although not without a warning that he was not to break it. He was rather impressed by the internet. A worldwide information sharing network like that would have been every cage's worst nightmare back in the elemental nations, though Selena's multiple warnings to stay away from the porn had been very amusing. It figured that over half of the internet would be pictures of boobs, people will be people after all. Though he found the notion of fake boobs vaguely disgusting, yet another thing about this world in a long line of them that made no sense to him whatsoever. But getting back to the point of using the internet, the music, there was a lot of it, so much that Naruto had been hopelessly lost at first. Selena hadn't been very helpful either, she just told him to Google it if he wanted an explanation, Naruto got the distinct feeling that she was still a bit angry at him for the rape prank, despite the fact that he'd gotten her two shiny cat things. It had taken him hours, but he'd finally been able to narrow down his interests. Most slow music he found terribly dull and sleep-inducing. He didn't get rap at all, and that was one type of music that had actually existed in the elemental nations, he hadn't gotten it there either. The purely electronic made stuff made his teeth itch with the sudden irrational desire to bite off the fingers of whoever was making it, it was repetitive, grinded on his nerves and irritated his sensitive hearing, it didn't even have vocals most of the time and he liked vocals. The so-called, pop, music, which was apparently called that because that's what the majority of young people listened to, confused him. From what he could tell it mostly consisted of bratty-looking girls and pretty boys, he hesitated to call them men considering they were in something called boy bands, in flashy clothing singing about how hard love was. Naruto personally didn't see what was so hard about it, all you had to do was devote yourself absolutely to the one you loved and respect whatever limits they set for you and vice versa, granted, it would seem that other people's morals weren't quite as flexible as his and Xana's were but the same principle applied. Though he had to say that it was amusing to look at a certain singer's timeline and be able to deduce their relationship woes just from the type of songs they wrote, love songs first, then songs about relationship trouble and then songs about how they got betrayed, funny stuff. Naruto was glad he would never have that issue, if Xana ever felt like betraying him, she would simply destroy his soul, problem solved. After slogging through that mess he'd finally come across something called, metal, which he would shamelessly admit to being interested in at first just because of the genre name, but he found himself genuinely liking it. It was mostly fast-paced, which he liked, and the themes seemed to cover practically everything. Though he did find the outfits some bands used to be rather over the top, but he managed to ignore it, he'd gotten used to all the unnecessary, in his opinion, showmanship by then anyway, he had to admit that he also wasn't too much of a fan of the barely intelligible growling type of metal, but to each their own he supposed. It was also funny to think that his appearance would be a huge hit among metalheads, they were big on horns apparently. Either way, most of his contemplation was centered on the possibilities of making himself a soundtrack while he was kicking the league's ass. Mournfully, he was forced to conclude that it just wasn't feasible. There's just no way I'd be able to set up a speaker system powerful and widespread enough for that to work, for one thing, I don't even know how to set up a speaker system, he admitted to himself. I see you've managed to take my suggestion and get some ridiculous idea because of it, Xana's amused voice drifted into his thoughts. It's not that ridiculous, you have to admit that it would be awesome to have a personal soundtrack while you're kicking ass, Naruto argued his position with a grin, happy to hear from her. Keep that in mind if you ever manage to figure out how to produce music with your chakra alone, since that's the only way I can see it being possible, Xana countered with some sarcasm. Yeah. Maybe if I learned how to manipulate sound waves in just the right way, but that would be so ridiculously complicated that it would probably take me a hundred years to figure out for even a single song, Naruto replied seriously. Exactly my point, it just isn't worth the effort, Zana retorted. I'm gonna do it. What? Came Zana's flat question to that declaration. Why would you waste one hundred years trying to figure out how to produce a song with your chakra? It's ridiculous even if you make a shadow clone do it. Why not? Naruto asked with amusement, it's not like we're short on time and you never know when you might need some appropriate music. Or you could just, you know, use a genjutsu to do it. That would be much simpler, she suggested sarcastically. Oh right, genjutsu, he said in realization, recalling that he could actually use that discipline now, I completely forgot about that. Why does that not surprise me? She muttered rhetorically. Well, I'll do that too and see which is better, he decided firmly. He could already see his wife rolling her eyes, fine then, far be it from me to dissuade you from your insane schemes. But of course, 
If you remember correctly it was my insane schemes that made us gods in the first place, Naruto said smugly. You're going to bring that up every time you need to justify something aren't you? Well it is one hell of good reason to brag, be that as it may I didn't contact you because I wanted to have this absurd conversation, I'm extending the timetable on our plan by at least a few days, Zana said, redirecting the conversation to its original purpose. Something going on. You could say that, he raised an eyebrow at the obvious amusement in her tone, you know about the dark-haired woman in the Justice League, Wonder Woman? Thunder tits? What about her? I got bored and decided to make her uncomfortable by suggesting that we have sex. Naruto's eyebrows shot up in surprise at hearing that, that seems more like something that I would do. I know, you weren't around to amuse me so I decided to do it myself, she admitted. Ah, that's so sweet, he teased, feeling her minor embarrassment at the admission, so, what happened? She was very happy to hear that and practically leapt at the opportunity. Naruto stood stock still for about 10 seconds before he suddenly started laughing Upro Arusli, scaring away all the wildlife in the area. If you were quite done. You tried to make her uncomfortable and ran into a horny carpet muncher. Bah ha 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 he said back while repeatedly smacking his hand against the ground, clearly not done at all. An exasperated sigh echoed in his head as he continued laughing like an idiot for the next three minutes. Okay. I'm done now he said with a small chuckle, wiping away a tear of mirth. Finally, she huffed, but he knew that she was smiling. So you ended up sleeping with her sort of by accident, but I get the feeling that's not the fun part, Naruto guessed. Oh no, the fun part is the fact that I forced her into a submissive position and now I'm going to taunt her into trying to get out of it, then I'm going to do it again. Damn, that's just evil, but how do you know she's going to play along? I mean, she could just not sleep with you again he asked curiously. Oh she will. I doubt her pride as a warrior would allow her to just let it go, Zana answered confidently, and I will be demanding that she come to me again, so she will feel the need to confront me about it for one reason or another, at which point I can simply seduce her again. Are you sure it's okay to be doing that? Naruto asked uncertainly and elaborated before she could ask, I know that we're already playing games with these hero types, but not with their emotions like this, if she ends up developing some weird kind of attachment to you, this is going to be really troublesome. Zana smiled to herself again in her room aboard the watchtower. It was good to see that her husband could still see them as people despite the way they were playing with them, his worries about losing sight of his own humanity due to the vastness of his power spoke well for him, not to mention the fact that he was questioning her actions spoke well about the healing of his rather cracked psyche, he'd never be normal but he had moved away from the one step away from insanity state he'd been in after her near death. It is quite all right. Casual one night stands with other women seem to be the norm rather than the exception in her home, which was the reason for her eagerness to jump into bed with me in the first place, she was desperate for some relief. Oh, so that's how it is, in that case, make sure to get her a t-shirt before we leave, Naruto advised sagely. Zana rolled her eyes at his suggestion. This t-shirt thing is going to be another running gag isn't it? Naturally, it's too funny to be just a one-time thing, he confirmed. Fine, I will make sure that she gets a t-shirt, hee <laughs> hee, good, Naruto chuckled, it's still hilarious that your plan backfired like that though, maybe you should get a t-shirt too? Something like, accidental lesbian sex. Oh really? She said with a distinctly smug tone in her voice, how about, I get more pussy than my husband? Naruto froze again as that sentence penetrated his brain and he realized that Zana was right, at the moment, she really was getting more pussy than him. The mind link closed with the echo of her laughter, preventing any comeback even if he had managed to think of one, which he didn't. He'd need to seriously step up his game if he wanted to one-up his wife this time. He knew that just sleeping around like a huge man whore wouldn't count, any idiot could do that, well maybe not any idiot, but it certainly wouldn't be anything special for him to manage it didn't even have to be sex actually, it just had to be something impressively devious. Ah well, it would come to him, stupid, insane plans always came to him. Diana was making her way back towards her room now that the latest meeting that the Justice League had held on the topic of Uzu was over. In short, they had nothing, aside from sporadic sightings, the horned man seemed to have vanished like a ghost, nobody really trusted the sudden silence and figured that he was planning something big, Zana had confirmed their suspicions, telling them that Uzu was well known to be unpredictable and seemingly random in his actions, but he had a habit of vanishing before he made any big moves. 
It was unfortunate that Jean couldn't find him via telepathy as their quarry was just as invisible to him as Xana was. Speaking of Xana, Diana didn't know what to do about her. She had fervently thanked Hera that no one had needed her for anything while she had been sleeping off their encounter, the life support system had fortunately cycled the air around so her room hadn't reeked of sex anymore and she had managed to remove all evidence of what had gone on. The sexual experience had been pleasurable on a completely different level from anything she'd ever experienced on the Mischura, but there was more to it than that, she was embarrassed at how apparently inadequate she'd been to the horned woman and her pride stung at being so completely dominated. She hadn't asked, but Diana got the distinct feeling that Xana was much older and therefore more experienced than her. It didn't help that veiled suggestive looks had been sent her way several times during the meeting and she was clearly expected to show up in the horned woman's room later on, the problem was that Diana didn't want to be submissive and cater to the domineering woman's demands like a servant and certainly not like a pleasure slave. Her body had tingled with leftover sensation even after she'd woken up and just the memory of it made an uncomfortably pleasant heat burn between her legs, it made her want to go back for more. Unfortunately, Diana was under no delusions as to what would likely happen if she played by the rules set by the other woman. She had seen that Xana clearly enjoyed the dominant position she'd claimed and Diana was far from certain in her ability to force the horned woman to accept her as an equal, she was the most accomplished warrior on the Mischira despite her young age, but this was a wholly different sort of battle, in this, she was clearly a rookie trying to measure up to a seasoned veteran and failing rather predictably. Despite her mauled pride, Diana decided that it would be best not to try vindicating herself and compounding the situation. She was actually rather apprehensive of the distinct possibility that it would happen again, mangling her pride further and eventually ending up as being normal for her to be dominated like that, it was not unheard of for a younger Amazon to fall under the sway of an older and more forceful one in such a manner, though the last such incident had been long before her time, the last known incident anyway. Shaking her head in an attempt to clear her mind of its preoccupation on this subject, Diana could hardly believe how much consternation her desire for the familiar release in the arms of a woman had brought her, especially considering the fact that Xana would only be with them for a short time and there were more important things to think about, such as the ruthless killer they were confronted with. Troubling thoughts? Came the casual question from the very woman who was the source of the troubling thoughts she was asking about. Diana spun around to face her, surprised that she had been snuck up on, Xana, you startled me. The Amazon's eyes flicked downwards towards the other woman's bare feet briefly, knowing it to be the most likely reason for her incredibly silent movement, Xana had refused to wear any kind of footwear despite the cold metal floors and walked with ghostly silence when she wished to do so. Yes, you seemed rather distracted, Xana replied conversationally, taking a step closer. I was considering our lack of success at finding Uzu and trying to think of any way to track him, Diana lied, not wanting to betray her conflicting feelings about the sexual encounter to the very woman she'd had that encounter with. There is no need to lie to me you know, I am well aware that you were unsettled by what happened between us, Xana replied with a small smirk stepping even closer. Diana backed away in time with her approach as she replied, not so much by what happened, but the way it happened, she admitted. Did you not enjoy it? The horned goddess asked and continued her approach. We shouldn't be talking of this here, anyone could see us, Diana deflected slightly nervously, having backed up into a wall in the face of the other woman's predatory approach. They might be in one of the less frequented areas but that didn't mean that there wasn't still a considerable danger of someone walking in on them, she knew that out of all the members of the Justice League she was the least prudish, which was highly ironic considering how generally perverse man's world was, either way, she didn't want her tryst with their guest to be known to everyone. Xana paid no heed to the words and pressed herself into the Amazon princess sensually. I think it makes it more exciting, she whispered into her ear. Well I don't, Diana hissed quietly, trying to gently push the other woman away but meeting with no success whatsoever, whatever else Xana's people may be, physically weak they were not. Are you certain? Xana said teasingly and deliberately pressed her thigh between the Amazon's legs, drawing a gasp from her. I have been wondering why you go into battle in such attire, it certainly flatters you, but it seems rather inadequate as armor, this was emphasized by her hands sliding over the body hugging armor and finishing their journey by cradling Diana's face in their clawed grip. Diana wasn't able to muster any answer to that for more than one reason, for one thing, she couldn't come up with any valid reason herself, that was just the way that the armor was and she had never questioned it, for another, 
the way that the horned woman was grinding her thigh between her legs was rapidly reminding her body of the pleasures inflicted on it earlier and she was already getting wet. Unknown to her, Xana was once again cheating and stimulating her pleasure centers with chakra, she would never have been able to get this kind of reaction out of the Amazon with just her thigh otherwise. Stop. Don't do this here, Diana whispered with a slight pant, hardly able to believe how easily any sense of control had been wrested away from her. Then come to my room later and I will do it there, she punctuated her purred statement by pushing her thigh more firmly upwards along with a tiny chakra surge, drawing a gasp from the Amazon. Don't keep me waiting too long now, she finished with a whisper, her lips nearly touching Diana's. Xana moved away after that, but Diana stayed leaning on that wall for nearly a minute longer, hovering perilously close to orgasm and silently thankful that she didn't have anything trickling down her legs at least with a shudder that she wasn't sure was from apprehension or pleasure. Diana concluded that no, she would definitely not be winning any fights for sexual dominance or even equality. She would indeed show up in Xana's room, but it would be to tell her that what had happened between them was just a one-time thing and most definitely not going to be repeating itself, it sat ill with her to do so when she knew Xana had been disappointed with her performance, but it would be even worse if she allowed herself to be pushed around into becoming the domineering woman's plaything. What a mess this had turned out to be when all she'd been looking for had been a pleasant hour or two in bed with another woman. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
she conceded that she would probably be eating her words about getting more pussy than Naruto. Even if it had been a joke more than anything, she honestly hadn't expected the dark-haired Amazon to be capable of resisting her to this extent. Naruto had certainly never managed. Then again, Naruto was a horn dog with no reason to resist, so it was hardly a fair comparison. Still, she would be damned if she would be letting the Amazon get away from this comfortably. Oh no, her original intention was to make her uncomfortable and that was what was going to happen. All right then, I will give you my final proposition and if you still do not want to continue, then I will respect your wishes and leave you be, Xana stated casually. What proposition? Diana asked warily, desperately locking her knees to keep her legs from shaking, she only needed to withstand this final temptation and then the persistent horned woman would let the matter drop, she was sure that she could do that much. This is something that I have never offered anyone before, just so you are aware of how far I am willing to go for you, Xana whispered into her ear quietly. The Amazon's breath caught as Xana's hand moved around so that it was caressed her rear end while the other fondled a breast. This is not something often offered to anyone aside from spouses in fact. Xana continued to speak sensually as her thigh joined her hands in stimulating the Amazon. What are you dhnngh? Diana's alarmed question was cut off when a finger was suddenly pushed just the slightest bit into her anal opening through her groin covering, causing her back to arch and making her gasp for air instinctively. I am showing you another form of pleasure Diana. The horned goddess spoke sensually and pushed her finger in just a bit deeper drawing another breathless gasp from the Amazon, her actual finger couldn't really be pushed in there thanks to the cloth covering it, nor did Xana really want to have one of her digits inside a mortal's anus, what with their unsightly need for waste disposal, but Chakra had no such physical limitations. How can this feel so good? Diana thought dazedly even as she desperately did her best to stay silent, she had always been under the impression that any playing around in that hole was supposed to be painful. She was mostly right even. Most people were never able to get any enjoyment out of such things, but Xana was once again cheating by stimulating the nerves with chakra. Just give in Diana, if you do then I will allow you to lick my asshole, it's very clean, I promise. That was very true, it was, in fact, the cleanest asshole in existence since it had never been used before, not for waste disposal at any rate. Xana had no desire to perform such an unsightly act even though she liked eating, so she didn't allow her body to generate any waste. It had been one of the first things she taught Naruto how to do once he became a god, gods shouldn't have to endure the indignity of such a thing. The jarring crudeness that had just drifted into her ear was enough to snap the Amazon out of the lusty haze she'd been placed in and she violently ripped herself out of the hold that the horned woman had on her. What? She squawked rather uncharacteristically, readjusting the cloth covering her groin. What's wrong? Xana asked, her quizzical tone sounding very convincing. I'm offering you a great honor you know, I've come to like you so I've offered this to you, which I have never offered anyone before. This was also true, she had never offered something like this to anyone before, Naruto had simply done it without asking for permission, the pervert. Why would anyone want to do that? Diana demanded incredulously, starting to get the distinct feeling that her decision to distance herself from Xana in any kind of sexual way had been wiser than she'd known when she had made it. Why not? Xana once more asked in puzzlement with her head cocked, it is a highly erotic act and many would give their right arm to be allowed to do it to me. Alright, that was laying it on really thick, but the Amazon was so off balanced by the seduction and then the strange offer that she probably would have believed that there were flying purple kittens farting rainbows just outside the window. So, would you like to? She asked as she once more approached the dark haired woman. Diana opened her mouth to answer but was cut off by the speakers. All Justice League members prepare for deployment. Uzu has been sighted in Metropolis. Jean's announcement blared across the watchtower, interrupting what would have been Diana's refusal. Thank Hera. Diana exclaimed unthinkingly, grateful beyond words for an escape from the incredibly awkward situation. She tried to rush out the door only to get hit by something even Xana hadn't foreseen. Diana's legs buckled under the sudden quick movement, having still been a bit wobbly under the horned woman's ministrations. The Amazon was also dismayed to feel a few wet trails going down her legs, the material of her groin covering was entirely non-absorbent, but that just meant that the visible signs of her arousal had nowhere else to go but out. Are you alright? Xana asked, suppressing any visible signs of her amusement at seeing the Amazon princess so ruffled. I'm fine, Diana answered shortly, her face burning in embarrassment. 
You can use my bathroom for a quick shower if you'd like, Zana offered. Diana nodded her head and entered the bathroom for a very quick scrub, feeling inordinately grateful that the awkward situation was done with even if the conversation had been interrupted, that was probably going to leave some residual awkwardness, but it was at the very least over. She really should have known that a people that looked so alien would have some very odd sexual practices, but she hadn't considered that in her relief at finding a woman that seemed to come from a society that was so similar to hers, she'd gotten her pride mauled and rather humiliatingly dominated, then she had very nearly gotten roped into some strange kind of anal play, but at least it was over and she'd know better next time. Out of her sight, Zana bit her lip to stifle her amusement. The unresolved conversation was likely going to be a constant source of low-level discomfort for some time, but more amusing than that was Naruto's strangely perfect timing and Diana's horror-struck face at the idea of licking her anus. The next bit of entertainment was already lined up as Naruto messed with Metropolis, but she was getting eager for it to be over. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Despite the ever-present sense of proximity to an apex predator, it was starting to become obvious that he wasn't here to kill her. Well, I've been wondering what the deal was with you being a criminal, all the information I've managed to get on you seems to point at the idea that you're not exactly enthusiastic about it. What else am I supposed to do, looking like this? She answered bitterly, I used to be a scientist, one of the best geneticists in the world, but after my change I became an outcast, there wasn't exactly a lot I could do and I certainly wasn't going to join a circus so that people could gawk at me like I was some kind of freak. Ah, the typical human rejection of anything out of the ordinary, Naruto mused, remembering the way that Jinchuriki had been treated in the elemental nations. Didn't consider becoming a superhero? I hear that's all the rage after science accidents these days, he asked Riley. Yes that's exactly what I needed, to make enemies on top of everything else, not to mention that being a superhero isn't a paying job, she retorted sarcastically, but settled down quickly once she recalled just who she was talking to. That it isn't, he agreed with a smirk, several moments of slightly awkward silence followed before Naruto spoke again. So, would you like me to try changing you back? I offered it to Poison Ivy, but she turned me down, you look like you'd want it though. Her eyes snapped up to his and it took every bit of restraint she had to keep from demanding answers about his ability to do something like that or even agreeing on the spot. Instead of that, she asked a wary question, what's the catch? Well, there are two things that I would ask you to do for me in exchange. What kind of things? She asked even more warily, not liking the sound of it, she didn't believe for a moment that something like this wouldn't have a huge price tag attached to it. Nothing bad, I promise, I'd just like you to explain something to me if you can and one other minor thing, he answered honestly. Biting her lip, Priscilla considered, Uzu seemed sincere enough, though he clearly didn't want to reveal what he wanted from her, which was a point of concern, what he considered minor could well be something that she really didn't want to do and she didn't know him well enough to judge whether he'd be the type to do something like that. But she really wanted her life back and he had been friendly enough so far, so she decided to risk it, once she was back to being fully human, there wasn't a whole lot that she could do for him anyway. Yes, I want to be normal again, if you think you can do it, she said, hiding her nervousness, what do I have to do? Just relax, he said soothingly and pressed his palm to her chest, his lips quirking when he felt her embarrassment at the touch. Feeling out her life force, which was quite different from a regular human, he started pulling away the animal and reinforcing the human finding it oddly ironic that the terrible life-draining ability he developed long ago was now being used to help someone. It's done, you can open your eyes now, Naruto said and removed his hand. Priscilla did so and started tearing up in relief when she saw pale pink flesh instead of spotted fur, her balance also felt off and she reached behind her to make sure that the tail was gone, running a hand over her head, she noted that she was bald but that was completely inconsequential in the face of the fact that she was fully human again. Would you like me to grow your hair back too? He questioned when he saw her do that. Please, she confirmed with a happy nod, this time placing his hand on her head, he stimulated hair growth until it reached to her shoulders in an unorganized mess that called for a serious trip to the hairdresser. Blonde, should have known, he muttered with a sardonic grin. She opened her mouth to ask what he was talking about when she suddenly became aware of the fact that she was naked, something which hadn't been a concern ever since her change into that cheetah hybrid. Her face developed a blush and she covered herself awkwardly, his appreciative look not making her feel better in the slightest. Well, this is a perfect time for that minor thing I wanted to ask you to do. Her heart sank at his words, it had been a concern that he would demand sex in payment for changing her back and she had considered it to be worth it, but it still made her feel dirty. A all right, she stuttered nervously and removed her hands, hoping that he wouldn't be too rough at least. I want you to wear this t-shirt for me. Blinking incredulously, she completely forgot to cover herself as she automatically took the large t-shirt and spread it so that she could read the caption. Uzu sucked the pussy out of me. She gaped at the bold and extra large caption, too stunned to even say anything. What do you think? It's awesome isn't it? He asked with a huge grin at her reaction. This is what you want in exchange for giving me my life back? To wear a silly t-shirt for you? There was a vast amount of incredulity in her voice. What, did you think I was going to make you sleep with me? You're such a pervert kitten, he shook his head in mock sorrow, though the grin on his face ruined the effect. Grumbling slightly, she put on the t-shirt, finding it to actually be very comfortable, it was also big enough to reach down to her thighs, which was exactly what she needed right now. 
You wouldn't happen to have any pants or underwear would you? She asked jokingly. Ah nuts, I thought for sure that you wouldn't think of that, he grumbled good-naturedly and passed her a lacy black thong and a pair of grey sweatpants. Where are you getting all these clothes? She asked incredulously as she put them on, secretly relishing the feel of wearing clothing again, from what she could see, they were just appearing in his hands out of thin air. I'm imagining them into existence, he said mysteriously, wiggling his fingers to add to the effect. Priscilla looked at him skeptically, but couldn't find it in her to argue, for all intents and purposes it did look like he was doing exactly that and it certainly wouldn't be the strangest thing she'd ever heard of. So, what did you want me to explain to you? She asked as she sank back into the armchair, hugging her legs and marveling at how comfortable the clothes he'd given her were, she was definitely going to be using them as sleepwear from now on. Aside from the comfort, they would also be a pleasant memory of how she got her humanity back, even the t-shirt caption didn't bother her and it was technically true, terribly misleading though. This is something that's been bothering me ever since I came to this world and I couldn't find any explanation for it, so I figured that a geneticist might know, he started ominously, there had been geneticists back in the elemental nations, but all of them were medic nin and they'd been exclusively focused on bloodlines. She gestured for him to continue and listened attentively. Why aren't there any superheroes or villains with brown hair? What? Priscilla asked, utterly baffled at the strange question. Just look at everyone that's calling themselves super something or other, pretty much every male has hair that's either completely black or in rare cases blonde if they aren't bald, most of the women have hair that's some variation of red or blonde or the rarer black, mind you, this is disregarding those whose hair is some completely other weird color like blue or green. Priscilla continued to look utterly baffled, so Naruto continued speaking. Look at us for example, you're blonde and I'm blonde, in fact, my hair is the sexiest shade of blonde that the world will ever see which is directly proportional to my being the sexiest and most badass guy that the world will ever see, is there some kind of connection between awesome hair color and level of badass or something? Brown is by far the most common hair color and I've yet to see a single brown haired super anything which is why I want to know if there is something about brown hair that prevents people from gaining superpowers. Is it just too boring for the universe to deign gracing a brown haired person with some awesome, because if that's the case then the universe is an asshole. While you make a good point, I think it's just coincidence, she answered slowly once she'd gotten her wits about her at the strange question. So you're telling me that nothing but pure chance dictated that nobody with the most common hair color in existence ever got superpowers? He asked skeptically. I guess. She answered with deep uncertainty, knowing exactly how unlikely that was. You can't explain it can you? Not in the slightest, she admitted with a chuckle. They shared a moment of silence before Naruto abruptly stood up. Well, this has been fun, but I've got places to go and people to kill. Wait. She said and quickly got to her feet as well, not wanting him to vanish yet. Naruto raised an eyebrow at her and she gave him a hug, making him return it with a grin he always liked hugging girls. Thank you, for everything, she said with feeling, squeezing tightly. You're lucky that you're a cute girl, if you were a man I'd have just told you to suck it up and stop whining, he admitted wryly. The words caused her to laugh helplessly into his chest, she could quite easily imagine him doing something like that, it did give her an idea though. Naruto was surprised when she suddenly jumped further up into his arms, forcing him to catch her when she clamped her legs around his waist, but he didn't resist when she kissed him, he also took the chance to grope her ass. Well, I'm glad that you came along to help me, she said and slid back down to the floor, not at all offended by the groping, after all that he'd done for her, he was more than welcome to it, ironically, the fact that he hadn't demanded that she sleep with him was one of the major reasons why she felt so comfortable letting him do that. No problem, but I've just realized that you need one other thing. What? Instead of answering he handed her a pair of socks and sneakers, you're not a kitty cat anymore, so you might need these. Thank you. Again, she said ruefully, having honestly forgotten about that, it had been so long since she'd last worn clothes or shoes. And since I'm handing out presents, have these two as an apology for scaring you, he said again and made her cup her hands, after which a not inconsiderable amount of diamonds filled them. Diamonds? Where did you get these? She blurted out incredulously. Naruto merely wiggled his fingers at her again, inwardly. He wondered if he'd end up lowering the market price of diamonds if he kept on spawning them like this, girls sure did like their shinies in this dimension. Right, imagine them into existence, how silly of me, she said with a sigh, she should have seen that one coming. 
xxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxx
After that he promptly tossed it into his mouth, crushed it between his fangs and spat out the remains, needs some seasoning though. Luther stared at the horned blonde in shock, distantly wondering what kind of insane jaw strength and tooth hardness he must have to do something like that. Naruto grinned at the stunned lock on the bald man's face, well then, if you have nothing else to offer, I guess it's time to get to the killing. Wait. Just tell me what you want and I'll get it for you, Luther said desperately, he wasn't a coward, but he didn't want to die either. Could you convince your mother to have sex with me on top of this building? The blonde asked seriously. My mother is dead, Lex said slowly, so? I can't convince her to have sex with you if she's dead, Lex said, once again slowly, hardly able to believe that he was having this conversation. But you would do it if she was alive? Naruto asked seriously again. Yes. The businessman answered uncertainly, unsure if that was the right answer. You're a sick pervert Lexi, your parents must have regretted ever fertilizing you, Naruto shook his head in sorrow. Lex would have pulled his hair out in frustration if he had any, he was being called a pervert by a man that wanted to sleep with his mother on top of a skyscraper and seemed to consider death only a minor inconvenience in this pursuit, of course, his frustration was curtailed by the fact that this man clearly intended to kill him and was toying with him much like a cat would toy with a mouse. Any further thought was interrupted by a sword through the heart, time's up Lexi. The last thing Lex Luthor heard before everything went dark made only serve to confuse him. Lexi, or maybe Lexi, that would have made a good stripper name if you were a girl, shit, now I've got mental images of a bald woman doing a striptease, not that there's anything wrong with bald women. X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X X Naruto casually walked out of Luther's office, wiping down the kusanagi with the curtains that he'd torn from the windows, and approached the secretary's desk. Good evening, I just wanted to inform you that there's a dead body bleeding on the carpets in there. The secretary took one look at the towering horned man with slitted gold orange eyes and a fanged grin as he wiped blood from the long sword in his hands and predictably ran away screaming for security. I was just trying to be helpful, Naruto said with a mournful sigh, though his grin ruined the effect. It didn't take more than a minute for security to arrive, which prompted Naruto to comment to himself again, now that's one hell of a fast response. Put the sword down and get on your knees with your hands behind your head, the apparent leader of the three-man team commanded. The only time I get on my knees is during sex and you're the completely wrong gender if you're trying to tempt me with a foursome, Naruto shot back flippantly. Do as I said or we'll open fire, the man commanded again, ignoring the jibe. Naruto sheathed the kusanagi, spread his arms wide and spoke challengingly to the man, fire away. The security team didn't waste time firing their pistols but were greatly dismayed to see the bullets bouncing off the horned man's skin ineffectually. Several bullets struck Naruto's lower abdomen, causing him to bend over reflexively and giggle, shit, sometimes it really sucks being ticklish. Crap. He's one of those freaks that can't be hurt by bullets, the security team leader swore, fall back, let the Justice League deal with him, we don't get paid enough for this. Their boss might not like the Justice League, but he was dead and they'd already seen the uselessness of their guns. While the security team turned tail and ran, Naruto stood there and looked at their retreating backs with a frown, muttering to himself, there's no need to call me a freak just because you're jealous, you bunch of brown-haired sissies. X X X X X X X X X X X X The assorted members of the Justice League thought that they might have some trouble locating Uzu in a city the size of Metropolis, especially since the man had already proven himself highly capable in stealth. They were wrong. Is he seriously waving at us from the top of the tallest building in the city? Flash asked incredulously as they spotted the bright blonde mane on top of Lex Luthor's corporate tower from the javelin. He's mocking us, Green Lantern stated with a scowl. Don't underestimate him, he's smarter than he pretends to be, Batman cautioned, receiving firm nods from everyone. I doubt he's going to stay up there if we all go after him, I'll confront him while the rest of you spread out in case he tries to bolt, Superman said. I'm going with you, Xana cautioned us that he has many supernatural powers at his command, so he may well be able to harm you, Wonder Woman stated firmly. Fine, Superman conceded, seeing that the Amazon wouldn't budge on this. Their course of action decided, all the Justice Leaguers capable of self-sustained flight exited the javelin, with Lantern grabbing hold of Flash and carrying him out, Batman remained in the small spacecraft, knowing that he couldn't fight someone that powerful in hand-to-hand -hand without some kind of equalizer. 
Soon after, Superman and Wonder Woman were floating in the air in front of the horned blonde. Uzu, Superman stated as some form of neutral greeting. Ah, Captain Underpants and Thundertits, did you come up here to admire the view with me? Naruto asked with a mocking smirk. Neither of the two heroes reacted to the insulting nicknames, keeping in mind Batman's warning about underestimating him. We're here to bring you in to answer for your crimes. That's going to be a problem, Naruto observed mildly. I don't really think that I've committed any crimes and even if I had, I wouldn't be interested in answering for them. Wonder Woman opened her mouth to say something but was interrupted when Naruto took a deep breath through the nose and turned towards Diana. Oh, you have something of mine I see, or rather someone, her scent is all over you. Xana does not belong to you, Wonder Woman stated coldly, despite her discomfort at the way that Uzu had apparently been able to sniff out at least some of what had gone on between them. But she does, Naruto insisted, she had said so herself at their marriage. We will never allow you to fulfill your designs on her, Diana asserted, speaking for the entirety of the Justice League, the situation between her and Xana might be awkward and complicated, but it had no bearing on protecting her. Naruto simply shrugged, it wasn't his problem if they didn't believe him, well then, I guess we have nothing more to say to each other. Upon saying that, he launched himself across the metropolis skyline at immense speed, using the tall buildings to bounce around like a pinball. The Justice League wasted no time in giving pursuit, but were unfortunately becoming scattered due to their differing speeds. Flash was the fastest of them, but he was earthbound, making it much harder to follow the swift moving blonde. Batman could use the sensors of the javelin to keep better track of him than the others, but he was the least maneuverable, keeping this in mind, he stayed higher and fed the others intelligence about Uzu's movements. Green Lantern and Hawkgirl were the slowest flyers and thus reduced to following the others. Wonder Woman was pretty fast, but she had no good way to keep track of her quarry when he bounced around a corner. Superman was even faster than her and he could use his X-ray vision to keep track of Uzu better, but he needed to slow down when turning around corners or else risk smashing right through them. Jean was in fact the best suited for pursuit in this situation, his intangibility allowing him to keep a direct line of pursuit, he still couldn't use his telepathy to track Uzu, but he could feel the wave of shock and surprise felt by the humans who saw the horned blonde pass by them. He's toying with us, he's staying in the same area, but his movements are so random and abrupt that we can't pin him down, Lantern spat over their radio connection irritably. It was a true observation, Uzu was bouncing around the buildings and sometimes through open windows in a display of impressive acrobatics and incredible situational awareness. It was also clear that he could somehow sense their presences if his ability to always keep ahead of them in this bizarre game of tag was any indication. All of the Justice League was also severely confused by the fact that Uzu was somehow not breaking every surface that he pushed himself away from, not even the glass windows, despite the obvious force with which he was doing so. I will cut him off, I know where he will go next, Jean said stoically. Be careful, Superman cautioned. Knowing that no one was in a position to back the Martian up in time, they were all positioned so that they could cover any sudden changes in direction. Jean gave no verbal reply as he flew into position, just in time as well, as the horned man came into view immediately after, rocketing towards him at immense speed with clear intent to attack. Jean phased himself into intangibility, intending to allow Uzu to pass through him and then grab onto him from behind, it would need very good timing considering the speed at which Uzu was moving. But Jean was confident that he could do it. That plan was ruined when a fist plowed heavily into his supposedly intangible face, causing the Martian's head to suddenly feel very fuzzy, just before he had the back of it smashed into a building with enough force to knock him out, he heard Uzu say something that he wouldn't be able to remember later. If that trick didn't work for Obito eleven years ago, then it sure as hell isn't going to work for you now. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Their brief distraction had been enough for him to vanish from the sight of his pursuers, including the sensors on their spacecraft and now he was already eyeballing his next victim. The winged woman was an interesting one to be sure, Naruto's ever-growing ability to peer into things that happened after death allowed him to sense that her soul was trapped into some kind of artificial cycle of reincarnation, its hold on her was strong enough that it was distinctly possible that she could retain at least partial memory of these past lives. That was just a curiosity though, right now he was going for irony. Stealthily, he leapt at her and snatched her out of the air, covering her mouth to prevent any screaming from giving away their position. By the time that the nearby green lantern turned around, they had both already vanished through an open window of a nearby skyscraper, it seemed to be largely empty, which was probably mostly due to the fact that it was slowly getting dark, well that and the super-powered game of tag that none of the normal people wanted to get caught in. Shayera tried to struggle but Chains had pinned her arms almost as soon as she realized her danger, leaving her quite helpless, she did manage to activate her mace though and was heartened to see the chains breaking apart under its disruptive power. Arara. Now that's a dangerous mace you've got there, Naruto commented in amusement and had more chains bind her, this time avoiding the mace, he also took the opportunity to take her earpiece and crushed it. Shayera was obviously unable to reply because of the hand covering her mouth, but she did glare quite ferociously. Naruto paid the nasty look no heed as he swiftly carried the winged woman deeper into the building until she was out of sight of the outside, the others would be coming after them very soon and he needed to hurry. Wasting no time, he molded his chakra into a trick that he'd seen done only once back in the elemental nations and even then only in passing, it had been interesting enough that he'd put in some effort to learn it recently, he'd actually learned how to do it just because Hawk Girl had wings and it appealed to his sense of irony. Thickly woven spider webbing erupted from his fingers and stuck to every surface to form a crude spider web, after which he threw the winged woman back first into the sticky substance. Now don't you just look delicious hanging there little fly? It makes me wish I had time to play with you, he told her with a grin, gave a lusty growl and clacked his teeth at her like one of those wind-up toy jaws he'd seen the other day. He'd never do it of course, unless she wanted him to, but he was setting himself up to be the bad guy here. You're disgusting, she spat angrily and struggled ineffectually against the super strong web. And you're cute. What's your point? He shot back, much to her confusion. Not giving her a chance to reply. He ran back towards the windows at great speed and launched himself into a flying kick just in time to plow into Superman's face, sending the so-called Man of Steel flying back towards the other side of the street, though he managed to catch himself in the air before he slammed into any buildings. He also left an invisible clone in the building to keep spraying webbing everywhere. Not giving him time to react, he smashed into the man again and kicked him well away from the building where Hawk Girl was trapped. You can fly? Clark asked startled to see the horned man hovering in the air, with the way that the man had been jumping around, they'd all figured that he couldn't. Naruto looked down at his feet with a comically shocked look and started plummeting like a brick, causing Superman to instinctively attempt catching him only to receive another fist to the face. I can't believe you actually fell for that, are you seriously that gullible? Naruto asked with incredulity while the Kryptonian rubbed his jaw, Uzu's hits were nothing to sneeze at. Crap. Guys, me and Hawk Girl are stuck in some kind of spider webbing that Uzu created, we need someone to cut us out, Flash spoke over the radio, easily audible to Naruto as well as the Justice League. Naruto grinned in amusement at the speedy one's predicament, he hadn't expected that anyone would just run right into the webbing, he'd left the clone there with the expectation that he would need to throw any more victims in there himself. Superman made to go and cut out his comrades, but Naruto wasn't going to let that happen so easily and intercepted him with a much stronger kick than the ones before, making the Kryptonian give a pained shout as he was sent blasting off into the distance. Naruto wasn't worried about causing the guy any serious injury, he hadn't felt any ribs break under that hit despite flooding the first of the eight gates with chakra to empower himself to five times his normal strength. Ever since eating the chakra fruit, he had all eight of the gates permanently open, but he could choose how much chakra to run through them, it was a far superior way to power up as compared to the uncontrolled power boost it had given him when he'd still been mortal, he hadn't tried it, but he felt that he could quite comfortably shatter planets if he used all eight gates to their fullest potential, but so far that single gate just now had been the biggest power up that he'd ever used. It demonstrated that Superman definitely had impressive durability and was no doubt holding back a lot of power in most of his fights, 
It also showed that the man was kind of an idiot and far too prone to taking hits because he was so used to being invulnerable. Spying the Green Lantern guy going towards the two webbed heroes, presumably to free them, Naruto propelled himself at the man, releasing a war cry with the specific intent of warning the man of his approach. The man reacted instinctively and raised a green barrier to block his attack, it shuddered under the impact but held, Naruto was impressed, he'd powered down the first gate by now, but that hadn't been a light hit by any measure, he smashed his fist into it twice more, seeing the strain on the Green Lantern's face becoming greater with every blow. Interesting. A ring that allowed its wearer to construct hard light objects sustained by their will, as long as the lanterns will remain greater than the force behind his blows, the shield would hold. Naruto had no more time to experiment with the interesting looking toy due to Wonder Woman attacking him, she smashed him right in the jaw, sending him flying a short distance away, but he was clearly uninjured if the grin on his face was any judge. I love it rough. How about you thunder tits? He asked mockingly, knowing that it would remind her about her experience of being made Xana's bitch, he'd actually let her hit him exactly for that reason. Diana's face didn't betray the fact that she was indeed reminded of that, go free hawk girl and flash, I will hold him off, she said to Lantern, never taking her eyes away from the horned blonde. Not gonna happen, Naruto said mockingly and aimed a hand at the building where the two were trapped, Kokuangyo no Jutsu, bringer of darkness technique. The building became shrouded in darkness instantly and the radio echoed with exclamations about it from Flash. Flying away from another attack by Wonder Woman, Naruto sat down on a building with a flat roof, intending to have himself a little duel with the Amazon while Lantern lost himself in the artificial darkness of the Genjutsu he'd cast earlier. A short time later, Lantern also said something to the effect of being unable to pierce the darkness before the clone webbed him and knocked him out. His desire for a duel with the Amazon was curtailed by the return of Superman who sat down next to Wonder Woman and prepared to fight him alongside her. Naruto frowned in disapproval, he didn't want to fight both of them at once just yet, with this in mind, he leapt off the building, intending to once again vanish until he could take one of them out and fight the other alone, he rather unexpectedly felt himself getting shot in the back and knocked out of the sky by what he guessed was the laser cannon of their small spacecraft as it was fired expertly by Batman. He'd felt the Bat-themed hero's constant hostility towards him and dismissed it as irrelevant since the man had no means to actually act on it, or so he had thought. Shooting him in the back with a laser cannon with no idea if he'd survive or not, that was impressively vicious for this gathering of pansies and he felt his respect for the grim hero go up a notch, clearly he'd taken note of the systematic destruction of his team and decided that the chance of killing him was an acceptable risk in the situation. Not that it did anything more than singe his hair and even that was fixed up soon enough, leaving the golden mane as shiny as ever, the first time he'd encountered the bat and his sidekicks, he'd been keeping his power and durability at a considerably lower level than it was now, still, it was the first decent hit that they'd scored on him, for which he had to give due credit. He's set us up, we've been playing by his rules and he took us apart one by one, don't let him separate you, Batman cautioned over the radio. Naruto once again frowned at the advice that the bat gave to his comrades, that was the exact opposite of what he wanted. With a sudden movement that allowed him no chance to react, Naruto aimed two fingers at Superman and shot a fork of lightning at him, causing the man to scream as the chakra-based lightning bypassed his usual damage resistance and truly hurt him. His attack was blocked when Diana interposed her bracers in the path of the lightning, drawing it to the metal objects and dissipating it harmlessly with their protective properties, still, Superman was looking kind of extra crispy and wouldn't be an issue until his healing factor could repair the damage. Wonder Woman looked furious and instantly chased after him as he leapt to another building, not even caring as he used magnetism to remove her earpiece and destroy it. There was no time for amusing banter as the Amazon threw herself at him with a flurry of attacks that showed clear martial arts training. Naruto had no trouble keeping up though, as she was still lacking something crucial despite her training. All of her movements were well executed but she showed none of the improvisation or viciousness that could only be learned through life and death battle where any blunders could get you killed. After a couple of minutes of Naruto easily evading or blocking her blows, she put too much force into one of her punches and the horned blonde decided to take the opening for a change, he redirected her fist even further off course and then gave her shoulder a shove that sent her crashing over the edge of the building. You need a lot more practice in serious combat before fighting me in hand to hand, he commented idly, or maybe you're more of a lover than a fighter judging by how heavy Xana's smell is on you. Wonder Woman scowled at him angrily and tossed her lasso towards him. 
Naruto allowed it to snare him, feeling curious about the glowing golden rope. The instant it was around him, he felt its powers of truth compulsion working on him, which was worrisome if the Amazon decided to ask any questions that would cause him to give up the game, being stronger than the gods that created it, he was confident that he could overpower the compulsion if he wanted to, but that would almost certainly also reveal that he was lying, which would give up the game the same as the truth. With this in mind, he strained against the rope mightily and felt rather shocked when it wouldn't give no matter how much he increased his strength, clearly this rope was something that couldn't be broken by brute force, no matter how much of it was applied, impressive, that could only mean that its strength was linked to its ability to force the truth out of people rather than anything physical. What have you done to the building in which Hawk Girl and Flash are trapped, Diana demanded. I placed an illusion over it that would blind anyone entering it, Naruto answered honestly. What do you intend to do after gaining Xana's necklace? The Amazon demanded next, wanting to get some insight into his motivations. I intend to fuck her into next week, Naruto answered honestly, smirking. The rope might not let him outright lie, but it was entirely possible to tell the truth and allow whoever heard it to draw incorrect conclusions, this could actually be fun and he'd already figured out several ways to escape in case he didn't want to answer something. Diana recoiled at the crude answer, but pressed on, she said that you needed to kill her in order to gain the Magatama necklace and the Yada mirror. That's not the only way, very true, he could make his own or he could just take her necklace without killing her or he could even ask her to give it to him, useless prop that it was, of course, he could theoretically kill her before taking the necklace, but it would be by far the hardest option and probably require so much effort as to be nigh impossible. And she's far too beautiful to kill, yet again very true, according to himself. You're sick, Diana said with a nauseated look on her face. I'd also like to fuck you from behind while making you eat my cum out of Xana's pussy in case you wanted to know, Naruto offered helpfully taking full advantage of the fact that everything he said at the moment would be believed unquestioningly to air some perversions. The Amazon looked even more disgusted and deliberately tightened the rope painfully. So rough, people might think you're a sadist, did you spank Xana when you slept with her? He knew that she wasn't a sadist, but people really might wonder if they saw this without knowing better, the second was neither a truth nor a lie, so he could say it with impunity. Be silent, she snarled angrily her patience snapping under the weight of his provocation. Naruto smirked and used some space-time manipulation to reverse their positions, leaving Diana bound in her own lasso and Naruto holding on to the other end. What color panties are you wearing? I'm not wearing anything under my armor, Diana looked instantly horrified as the truth spilled out of her mouth against her will. On a scale of 1 to 10, how physically attractive do you find me? He had to ask physically, as he was quite sure that he was a minus 12 in terms of personality because she thought he was all sorts of evil at the moment. 6. Naruto grasped at his heart and adopted a stricken expression at the number, congratulations, this is the worst that I've been hurt in this battle so far, you got me right in the ego. Not giving her a chance to reply, he yanked on the lasso and sent the Amazon crashing right into the impenetrable darkness sustained by the illusion on the nearby building she wasn't going to be making it out of there anytime soon thanks to his clone and she was sturdy enough that the impact wouldn't harm her. Turning around, he aimed a smirk at the mostly recovered Superman that was now coming right at him, contrary to his expectation, the Kryptonian didn't stop to plant his feet on the ground, instead smashing right into him without stopping. Clearly, Batman had told him about how durable he was, allowing him to fight with less restraint. But Naruto was still sorely disappointed by the Man of Steel and his fighting ability. He fought like a berserker, only without the actual berserking, he didn't use his feet at all and every punch was telegraphed, clearly this was someone used to simply overpowering his opponents because of his superior physiology, Naruto was actually kind of reminded of himself at the beginning of his shinobi career, back before he'd stolen Hashirama's fighting ability when he'd been mostly brawn and some clever tricks. Getting bored of the mid-air battle, he used one of Superman's fists as a handhold to swing himself around and smash him into the street below, near instantly, Batman took the opportunity to fire the laser cannon at him again now that there was nothing behind him in case he missed. Naruto was ready for it this time though and used a red yang barrier to deflect it upwards, after which he blew the javelin away with a massively powerful wind. Superman had just about dug himself out of the hole he'd been smashed into when Naruto's bare feet gently set down on the road and he commented to his opponent bluntly. Your fighting technique sucks, you should take lessons. I might do that later, but for now it'll be enough to take you down, 
Clark said confidently and prepared his heat vision, feeling sure that the horned man wouldn't be killed by it. Naruto extended his hand and created a localized space-time distortion to catch the twin beams and absorb them, you'll never accomplish anything if you don't attack me with intent to kill. Of course, he very much doubted the entire Justice League would accomplish anything even if they did attack him with intent to kill, but that was besides the point, he wanted to see just how much Superman was holding back. Seeing that his opponent was about to make some comment about his refusal to kill or something equally pithy, Naruto launched the trapped energy of the man's own heat vision back at him in the shape of a concentrated ball, sending the Kryptonian crashing ass over tea kettle down the street. Learn to dodge or at least block you moron, invulnerability is not a good reason to give the enemy free hits, he shouted after the red cape man, feeling strangely irritated by his idiotic combat doctrine, he was well aware of how hypocritical it was for him to be saying that considering his own former berserker tactics, but he didn't much care. Superman didn't take too long to pick himself up since he wasn't really hurt by his own attack, but he did make a note not to try using the heat vision again, deciding to use another power, he took a deep breath and exhaled his frost breath at the blonde. Naruto posed so that his hair and Howry were blown around dramatically even though everything around him was covered in frost, what a refreshing breeze, all this fighting was getting me terribly hot and bothered, so I thank you for cooling me off. Superman's expression tightened in poorly concealed frustration, it had become obvious by now that he was being played with and baited, Uzu could have blasted him with lightning again already and ended it, in fact, he could have slaughtered the entire Justice League, but he'd left them all alive so far, judging by his behavior during this entire time, he was feeling them out. Naruto got bored of waiting for the Kryptonian to make a move and attacked him in hand to hand, finding it pathetically easy to dominate the fight. Come on. Put some effort into it you wimp, or should I go after that cute cousin of yours next? Kara was it? I'm sure she'd be more fun than you, Naruto taunted, grinning when Superman's expression darkened and he started fighting more viciously. His technique still sucked though and he did nothing but throw predictable punches, so it was easy to land a kick to the side of his knee and make his leg collapse to force him down on one knee, before Superman had a chance to get back on his feet, a punch thundered into his jaw from above and smashed him into the ground. Naruto sighed while the red caped man picked himself up again, it was beyond obvious that the Kryptonian had never truly needed to develop any real fighting ability because he was so ridiculously powerful compared to everyone else he'd ever encountered and now it was coming to bite him in the ass. Man. I think I really will go and get your cousin if this keeps up, you're so boring. Naruto was surprised by the speed at which the Kryptonian smashed into him after he said that, he even ended up taking some pretty damn powerful punches. Of course the minor damage he suffered regenerated instantly and it was easy to retake control of the fight, but progress. I wonder. Are you proud of what you do? Catching these criminals only to have them loose again soon after. Why do you even bother if you aren't going to put them down? Naruto asked curiously as he fended off the red cape man's attack. I just catch them, it's not my place to decide their punishment, Clark stated firmly as he continued attacking to no effect. Naruto frowned as the Kryptonian's strength and speed diminished again, seriously, take his mind away from his anger and he seemed to subconsciously hold back. How heartless of you, did you know that there were enough murderers, rapists and pedophiles in Gotham to paint this entire block crimson before I got there? I wonder how many are in this city, walking free because they don't need to fear anything from you. You're the last person that has any right to pass judgment considering how many you've killed and the way you've been speaking to Wonder Woman and Hot Girl makes you out to be a rapist yourself, Superman shot back angrily. Naruto grinned viciously and grabbed both of Superman's hands to force a contest of strength, maybe I am, just imagine what I'll do to your cousin once I get my hands on her. Superman growled and Naruto quickly felt his strength growing as anger overrode his usual restraint. He increased his own strength to match and continued provoking the Kryptonian. I bet she smells nice, I wonder if the females of your species have maiden barriers? Do you think she's a screamer? With every taunt, Superman kept growing more angry and exerting more force, by the time of Naruto's third sentence, he needed to have the third gate at nearly full capacity to match him, which was nothing to sneeze at. Stay away from my cousin. Clark growled furiously his eyes glowing red and clearly about to fire his heat vision right into Naruto's head. Are you going to cut my head off tough guy? Naruto asked mockingly, trying to provoke him into doing exactly that, he wasn't sure if those eye lasers would even be able to singe his neck at this point, but it would be funny no matter what happened. 
Contrary to what Naruto had intended, the taunt caused Superman to falter. Realizing just how close he was to intentionally killing someone, his strength started diminishing as he got control over his anger and that subconscious restraint came back. Naruto scowled deeply, starting to get very pissed off with the Kryptonian. Here he was, threatening to rape the man's cousin and he was still holding back and unwilling to kill him. The fact that Supergirl was more likely to get a hug and all the help she wanted from him instead of being harmed was immaterial right now, he was threatening what was in essence the man's little sister with rape and he damn well expected to be turned into a bloody smear for it. Naruto took the matter of little sisters very seriously. Without warning he tugged on Superman's arms and surged forward simultaneously, sinking his fangs into the Kryptonian's shoulder in a spray of blood. Superman screamed in pain at the unexpected injury and stumbled away, holding a hand to his bleeding shoulder. Naruto bared his bloody teeth at the man and snarled viciously. Inwardly though, he was slightly confused as to why it had been so easy to bite through the man's skin, at least. He was confused until he remembered chewing on that hunk of kryptonite that Lex had tried to bribe him with, some residue must have stayed on his teeth. Not giving him any chance to recover, Naruto formed the black shakuho and started beating the crap out of Superman with it. What kind, of big brother, are you, if you aren't, even willing, to kill, for your, little sister? With every pause in his speech he slammed the chakra construct into the kryptonian. As far as Superman's durability was concerned that staff was a magical construct or something very close to it and was therefore highly effective, by the end of the sentence Superman was looking like, well, like a man that had gotten the shit beaten out of him with a staff. Naruto arched an eyebrow at the beaten lump of Kryptonian trying to get back on his feet, feeling perfectly justified in administering that beating. Superman. A concerned female voice called in worry, causing Naruto to look upwards. Seeing a blonde girl in her late teens flying at him with clear intent to attack, Naruto easily recognized Supergirl. Supergirl no. Stay back. Superman shouted at her desperately despite the pain it caused his broken ribs, knowing that his headstrong cousin had no idea how hideously dangerous the horned man was, none of them had imagined that he would be this powerful. Kara normally wouldn't have involved herself in the battles of the Justice League, at least not until she joined up herself but there had been news reports of the battle in Metropolis and they'd all been saying that the Justice League was losing, that was the reason she'd put on her uniform and gone to help, despite knowing that her cousin wouldn't want her to. In the time that it had taken for the teenaged superheroine to reach Naruto, he had already thought up a plan. It was a devious plan, it was a cruel plan, it was a plan that would cause Superman massive amounts of mental anguish, it was a plan that Naruto, who was still pissed at the Kryptonian for his failure to respond with lethal force when his little sister was threatened, liked a great deal. Easily intercepting Supergirl's tiny fist, Naruto manifested chains to bind her limbs, chains which were far too strong for her to break. Let her go. Clark wheezed, only to receive a jab in the gut with the Shakuho, sending him crashing back to the ground. Stop it. Leave him alone. Kara demanded and struggled against the chains. Instead of saying anything, Naruto pressed his palm into Supergirl's bared midriff, causing a complex seal to spread across her body and then fade into invisibility until only a small spiral remained around her belly button. Kara's eyes fluttered closed as she suddenly felt all the strength leaving her until she slumped into unconsciousness, at which point Naruto slung her over his shoulder. What did you do to her? Superman demanded as strongly as he was capable in his beaten up condition, which was not very strongly at all. Nothing much, I just sealed away her power, she'll be less troublesome this way, Shikamaru would have approved, or maybe not, all things considered. Let her go, please, Clark pleaded, knowing that it was the only thing he could do, he was too beaten up to try taking his cousin by force. You had your chance to save her and you chose to keep your conscience clean instead, I hope you enjoy it, Naruto responded uncaringly, but don't worry, I'll take real good care of your cute cousin. He meant it too. He fully intended to keep Kara as safe and comfortable as possible for the few days that she would be in his keeping, he might even teach her a thing or two about fighting if she wanted to learn, of course, the lewd inflection with which he said it wasn't very comforting for Superman, nor was the way that he patted her backside when he said it. Predictably, the Kryptonian tried to attack him in a last-ditch attempt to save his cousin only to get brained with the Shakuho. You really need to work on being less predictable. Naruto told him with a sigh and vanished with a distortion of air, Supergirl slung over his shoulder. Superman's shout of anguished denial was heard very far indeed. 
XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
but what you say he said to you while he was beating you up indicates that there is at least a chance that he won't hurt her. Superman went back to looking anguished and enraged, once again glaring at the table and willing himself to heal faster so that he could go search for his cousin, a 50-50 chance that his cousin wasn't helpless in the hands of a rapist wasn't very reassuring. I don't suppose you could offer any insight on this? Green Lantern aimed his question at Xana. Nothing new I'm afraid. Uzu was always unpredictable and no one has ever managed to fully understand his motivations, Xana answered, that much was true even, Naruto always left people scratching their heads in confusion over his actions. Though she did have to restrain herself from facepalming, Naruto's slip up about the importance of little sisters because he was pissed at Superman for not trying to kill him had nearly given up the game. What about the magic he used? Do you know of any way to counter it? Diana questioned next. I do. But I must caution you that it isn't magic in the same way that you are used to, she answered. What do you mean? Shayera asked curiously, my mace disrupts magic and it worked just fine on those chains. We call it chakra, it is a combination of the energies of body and spirit. So if it isn't magic, then why did Hawkgirl's mace work on it and why was it able to hurt Superman? Batman asked, hoping to find a way to counter it, especially if he could duplicate it. I can only guess that it was the spiritual part of chakra that explains both. The physical half of chakra gives substance and the spiritual half gives form. I would surmise that Shayera's mace disrupted the spiritual energies giving form to the chains, leaving the energy of body to dissipate into nothing without a form to give substance to. Similarly, Clark seems invulnerable to anything physical aside from kryptonite, but since the lightning and the shakuho that Uzu used are partly spiritual it got through that invulnerability. Xana explained, getting understanding nods from everyone. Of course, she didn't let them know that it was fully within Naruto's ability to prevent such a thing from repeating itself now that he'd experienced it once. And the counter. Batman prodded, me, she said shortly, I am the only other chakra user present and my Yada mirror will allow me to block any ranged attacks, leaving only physical and indirect attacks for you to worry about, though the Green Lantern Ring may also be effective as a way to block him. So you're going to need to fight him with us? John asked, cleaching the fist with the ring on it, remembering the force behind Uzu's punches, he knew that he wouldn't be able to take a sustained attack like that, but it was reassuring to know that it would work. It seems I have little choice in the matter, but I will only be able to defend you as my skill with chakra manipulation is not as great as his and I have no martial arts training, it was greater in fact, but the second part was true at least. I thought you said that Uzu only gained these powers because he chose to walk the outer path? Batman asked suspiciously, seeing some inconsistency in her story. What he has used against you so far were not the powers of the outer path, merely regular chakra powers available to any of my people with sufficient training, though as a sage of six paths, Uzu is naturally more powerful in the art than most anyone else. The outer path deals in the manipulation of the border between life and death, such as resurrection in the calling of undead to fight for him, for a price. He can bring the dead back to life? Diana asked, stunned just like everyone else. Yes, it was because of this that I had to flee, he had reincarnated a group of long dead heroes to fight for him and we had no means by which to stop them, Xana confirmed, inwardly snorting at the creative bent to the truth. Why hasn't he used that against us yet then? Batman asked, still suspicious. He likely considers you to be so beneath him as to make such extreme measures unneeded, from what I understand, those powers carry a heavy price and require considerable preparation, she explained, hoping that he would drop it already, this paranoid suspicion that Batman had going for him was starting to irritate her, even if he was right to be suspicious of her. What about the way he absorbed my heat vision and sent it back at me? Superman asked, wanting as much of an advantage as possible for the next encounter. Xana faked a look of surprised interest when she spoke next, did he use any other special power except for elemental manipulation? He created some kind of very strong spider webbing to trap us, Shayera said. That is likely a form of sub-element the same as his ability to manipulate plants, though not one I have ever heard of, Xana said dismissively. He switched positions with me when I had him caught in my lasso, Diana said, recalling the moment when she suddenly found herself bound by her own rope. I see. That sounds like direct space-time manipulation, as I thought, a very dangerous ability and one that was long thought lost. He also said that he sealed away Kara's power, Superman informed. Fuinjutsu. A powerful art in the hands of a master. I truly have no choice but to help you fight him, 
he has grown much more powerful than he was when I fled from him, had I known he was this strong already I would likely not have bothered coming here, Zana said with a despondent sigh, seemingly losing hope in their chances. But this means that we can choose the battlefield, Bruce said contemplatively, setting his suspicions aside for now, though he intended to keep an eye out for treachery, if Zana is out in the open, then we can make him come to us and that's going to count for a lot, we can win. Then we'll do that as soon as I'm healed, Superman said firmly, not wanting to waste even a single moment, the things that his cousin might be going through right now didn't bear thinking of. The rest of the League agreed wholeheartedly, they didn't want Kara to be held captive by that man for even a moment longer than necessary, his behavior during their battle left all of them with a deep unease about what he might do to the poor girl. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Good morning Kara. Naruto greeted pleasantly. I'm sure you've already recognized Pammy and Harleen, he gestured to Poison Ivy and Harley as he said this. Pamela gave him a dirty look at being called Pammy but didn't object, but Harley was less restrained, you know I don't like my given name, don't I get a nickname? Alright Peaches, I won't call you Harleen anymore, Naruto responded agreeably. She rolled her eyes but didn't protest, as far as nicknames go, it could be worse. She'd been rather terrified of him ever since he'd killed the Joker as if it was no big deal but Ivy had managed to talk her out of the worst of her anxiety by now. When he'd first approached them with this offer of a vacation in a tropical paradise she'd been silently begging her friend to refuse because of that fear and had then spent an hour just keeping her head down and hoping he would ignore her, the past two hours spent playing games with him had allowed her to see that he really was as nice as Red had been saying he was, he was still monstrously dangerous, but she could understand that he wasn't dangerous to her. Surprisingly, she'd only felt a brief sense of resentment against him for killing the Joker and even that was completely overshadowed by relief, granted, she'd have probably gone completely crazy if Red hadn't been there for her, but with the mad clown dead she felt more free than she had felt in years. And this over here is Priscilla, though you probably know her better as Cheetah, he finished, gesturing to the somewhat older blonde woman that looked to be in her early thirties. Kara aimed a disbelieving look at the woman, unable to reconcile her with the animal hybrid villainess. I think you broke her, Priscilla quipped, rather enjoying the shocked look on the young superheroine. But how can this be Cheetah, she's not, well, a Cheetah. I turned her back, Naruto explained with a shrug. Kara took a deep breath and got control of herself, not wanting to let Uzu dictate the flow of events, I won't cooperate you know, no matter how nice you make my prison look Uzu. Naruto scratched at his face and thought of the best way to approach this, he'd figured that she would be the stubborn type but it really would be preferable if she didn't sulk for the entire vacation, my name is Naruto actually, Uzumaki Naruto, Uzu is just something I made up to make myself seem more alien and mysterious to you hero types. Kara continued glaring with her arms crossed, looking quite mulish. Girls, I think you might as well head to the beach without us, this looks like it might take a while, he said wryly to the other three women. Are you sure you wouldn't rather have us stay and help? It might be easier that way, Priscilla asked with an arched eyebrow, easily seeing how stubborn Supergirl was intending to be. Nah, I've got this, besides, I'm the one that kidnapped her, so it's only fair that I handle this, Naruto waved off. Don't take too long now, I'm going to want a massage soon, Pamela said teasingly as they left, surprising Kara quite a bit as she could clearly recall the redhead being far less cheerful from their limited interaction in the past. Pamela had been a bit dubious about his offer of a vacation at first. Especially given his rather insane plan of kidnapping Supergirl to go along with them, but since she had nothing better to do she had figured what the hell, she hadn't been expecting something this luxurious and was glad that she accepted, it might even help her clear her head enough to figure out what she wanted to do with her life from now on. Sticking around in Gotham and getting into fights with Batman seemed kind of stupid and counterproductive. Have a seat, Naruto offered once they were alone. I'll stand, Kara snarked, mostly just to be contrary. I know you said you won't cooperate, Naruto began, sounding amused, but there really is nothing for you to cooperate with, which means that there is also nothing for you to be rebellious about. What do you mean? She asked in wary confusion, I mean, that my purpose for your cousin is achieved just by your presence here, I just figured that I might as well make it as pleasant as possible for you, he explained. And what purpose do you have for my cousin? Kara asked tersely. When I picked that fight with the League earlier I just wanted to let them know that they needed to step their game up if they wanted to beat me and I did everything I could to provoke them into trying to kill me, while I was fighting your cousin however, something came up that made me really angry and then you came flying in and I decided to kidnap you on impulse because of that anger. Seeing that the girl was listening intently despite her intention to be difficult, Naruto continued explaining. I could see that he was holding back a lot of his strength subconsciously, which I will admit is probably a good thing considering how much stronger he is than the average human, but I wanted to see just how strong he really was, to that end I started threatening that I was going to rape you if he didn't entertain me. Seeing her start to look alarmed and fearful at hearing this Naruto quickly moved to reassure her, don't worry, I'd never do something like that. I just said it to provoke him. Kara calmed down somewhat, but still looked a lot more tense than before. What got me really angry was that he could already see that I was stronger than him, that I was playing with him and he had a perfect chance to kill me, but he didn't take it, 
Naruto explained before continuing Riley, not that it would have actually killed me, but he didn't know that. Clark isn't a killer and he won't become one just because you were provoking him, Kara said fiercely. His silly morals are his own business, if he wants to play kitty games with the bad guys that's his problem. What made me angry was that I was threatening to rape you and he was losing the fight so that must have been a real concern to him, but he still couldn't muster the will to attempt killing me for it when he had the chance, Naruto retorted with a scowl. He thinks that you kidnapped me and that you're raping me right now? She asked, going pale as she realized the situation. That's the idea, the horned blonde confirmed, I have to get back to him, tell him that I'm alright, she said desperately, looking around as if a way home would reveal itself. She knew that Clark had to be going crazy considering how overprotective he was at the best of times. I'm afraid that's not going to be happening, I'm going to make your cousin worry himself sick for at least a few days before I let you go back to him. But why? Why would you do this to him? She demanded, both angry and desperate. I don't think you understand the situation sweetie. Naruto said mildly, ignoring her scowl at the endearment. If I had actually been as much of a bastard as I was pretending to be. Then you would be chained naked to a bed right now instead of having this conversation with me. Super Pandies couldn't have known that I wouldn't actually do anything to you. But the threat didn't seem real to him until it was too late. I have no doubt that he would have tried to kill me now if the same situation repeated itself. But you don't get second chances to protect your loved ones, he hesitated to destroy a threat against his family because he was afraid of getting his hands dirty, for the kind of crap I was telling him, I expected him to rip my heart out set me on fire and piss on the ashes, instead of that he hesitated, hesitated to protect you, that's why I'm making him suffer through the next few days in the belief that I'm doing exactly what I told him I'd do. Kara's defiance left her bit by bit as he continued speaking, she loved Clark and admired his determination not to kill, but hearing what she could have been going through because he'd hesitated to use lethal force made her feel sick, the threat of rape had never really registered as a concern to her because she was so powerful, but all of that power was gone now leaving her weak and vulnerable. Peripherally she was aware that Naruto had probably done that on purpose to drive the point home as much as it was to keep her from escaping, but it hardly mattered in the end. Don't worry too much, I'll take you back to your cousin in a few days and the worst that will come of this will be that he's probably going to be a bit overzealous about your protection for a while, but hopefully it'll teach him that some convenient third option that lets him both protect what he wants to protect and keep his hands clean in the process won't always exist, Naruto said soothingly her lost puppy expression making him want to comfort her. Kara sank into one of the previously offered chairs, abandoning any effort at being difficult since it wouldn't make any difference. Why do you care anyway? You don't even know me. Why is it so important to you if he's willing to kill to protect me or not? She asked with a lot less fire in her voice than before. I had three little sisters once, not blood related to me, but they were still my little sisters, Naruto said nostalgically. Had? Kara asked hesitantly, getting the feeling that this story didn't have a happy ending. All three of them were soldiers, but they were important assets to the organization they belonged to, so the chance of them dying in the line of duty was low. I used to be part of the same organization and I was an even more indispensable asset, which is also the reason why I had people after my head. Kara leaned in closer, obviously interested and it made Naruto grin slightly to see her intent face. They were some of the most dangerous men alive but I was stronger than them and I didn't really take them seriously because of that. I was born into that life and never had any real choice about being a soldier or not, but I had much bigger ambitions in mind and no loyalty for anyone other than the woman that later became my wife, because of this I mostly did my own thing, fighting and killing my pursuers only when they came to me instead of hunting them down and killing them the way I should have. Naruto half expected her to object somehow to the last part but she was apparently too interested in the story to argue. Eventually something happened that made me abandon that organization, after which my wife and I went on our honeymoon and more or less forgot about the group of idiots that were killing themselves in their attempts to capture me, that was a mistake, because they eventually found a way to steal my wife away and nearly killed her, I managed to save her by the skin of my teeth but with their last gasp they brought back to life a man that was stronger than me, forcing me to hide. My three little sisters and one big sister had their own lives and didn't want to go into hiding with me and I didn't want to force them. Not long after that, Madara that was the guy they resurrected by the way attacked them, by the time I got there it was too late, my big sister and a friend were already dead and my little sisters were being used as hostages to force me into surrender. He had me trapped, because if I surrendered to him, 
It would kill my wife and if I didn't I would lose my sisters, but those stupidly brave girls saw it and they wouldn't let him win, they knew that if I gave in that Madara would enslave the world with no chance of escape so I had to watch as they killed themselves right in front of me to spare me the choice, because they loved me. At this point Kara was starting to get a little misty eyed and unthinkingly grabbed his hand in a show of support, much to Naruto's surprise, she was a much nicer girl than he'd expected, which only confirmed his decision to give her cousin some mental torture for his failure to protect her. Don't worry, that was over ten years ago and I've made my peace with it. I always knew that I would outlive them and I know that they're alright where they are, he reassured her, but there you have it, I was screwing around instead of taking a threat seriously and I lost them because of it, now it really rubs me the wrong way if I see someone else doing the same thing. I should have been the one protecting them but in the end they chose to die to protect me, because I didn't take a threat seriously. What happened to Madara? She asked, even though she was fairly sure that Naruto had killed him. I trapped his soul into a crystal and made him suffer absolute sensory deprivation for about nine years or so, by the time I let him out he was so insane that it took him six months just to blunder into the afterlife and I still think he only managed that by accident, Naruto admitted. How could you know that? Kara asked with her nose scrunched cutely in confusion, Naruto manfully pushed down the urge to hug her. I keep telling people that I'm a god but nobody seems to believe me, he told her mildly. Barbara told me about that, we both thought you were just on a power trip, Kara admitted, remembering to let go of his hand, but she also said that you're a huge pervert and you're not acting much like it. Oh I am a huge pervert, but I was only perving on Barbara to wind her up for the most part. If I had seriously wanted to seduce her I wouldn't have been so heavy handed about it, not to mention that she's a bit young for my tastes, Naruto said with an amused grin. Does that mean that I'm too young for you too? She asked with a raised eyebrow, knowing that Barbara was a bit older than her. Definitely, he grinned, how about you forget about your uptight cousin and be my little sister instead? I think I'll pass but thanks for the offer, she said dryly. Kara could hardly believe how much different he was in comparison to what she'd heard, his methods might be very harsh but he actually meant well, she still wasn't okay with his rampant killing but after hearing that heart-wrenching story about the way he lost his little sisters she couldn't bring herself to give him grief over it, she still wasn't sure what to make of the fact that he had a trio of villainesses keeping him company but figured she would find out soon enough. Would you like to go to the beach now? I did bring you here to give you a vacation after all, just because I've brought you here against your will is no reason not to enjoy yourself, he reasoned. It feels wrong to have fun here while Clark is worrying himself sick over me, Kara admitted, couldn't I just call him to tell him that I'm alright? Let me just point out that Clark will worry himself sick whether you have fun or not, as he should, and calling him would defeat the point, not to mention that it would give the game away, Naruto said dryly. What game? She asked in confusion, oh right, I haven't told you about that yet, well, let me tell you about what kind of ideas two bored gods might get if they had an outsider's perspective on this world. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
Naruto drawled sarcastically, yes, really. All right then. Let me argue that point, she impatiently gestured for him to do so, certain that she would win this argument. Take your average criminal, he performs a crime that according to this moral code that society is supposedly based on is immoral and then he hides the fact that he committed a crime, why does he hide? He asked her and continued before she could say anything, and yes, I know that laws and morals are a different thing, but they coincide on most points. Kara frowned in thought as she answered, because if he doesn't, the police will arrest him. So the police enforce the law, which is based on a moral code. Basically, the police enforce what is deemed, right, by society? Yes, she nodded in agreement. All right, now take your average supervillain, which the police are unable to stop. Someone like the recently deceased Livewire for example, her lightning powers would make almost certain that the police wouldn't be able to stop her. What happens in that case? Well, a superhero like my cousin would stop her. So, Superman would enforce the law in place of the police who have suddenly found themselves powerless. Yes, Kara said with some uncertain confusion, getting the feeling that this was all leading up to something. And what happens when someone like me comes along? someone that no superhero currently making Earth their home can bring down. They'd find a way, Kara asserted, you're dodging the question sweetie, Naruto pointed out, grinning as she once again scowled at the endearment. Don't call me that, she grumbled, I guess you'd win and be able to do whatever you want. So, the police are stronger than the average criminal, supervillains are generally stronger than the police and superheroes are generally stronger than supervillains, which means that the system works, sort of. But when someone comes along that's too powerful to be beaten, he can ignore that flimsy moral code and do as he pleases, because nobody can force him to respect it. I guess, but that doesn't make what you're doing right, it just makes you strong, she grumbled again. If I wanted to, I could bring the world to its knees and make a new moral code that says all rapists should be burned alive. Or I could say that all women are forbidden to wear clothes and either way nobody would be able to say I'm wrong because they don't have the strength to contest it. Eventually, no matter what kind of screwed up system I put in place, it would become normal and nobody would even wonder anymore whether it's right or wrong, that's the way that society gets established, the strongest person or group of people lay down a set of laws and force everyone else to obey them and if they don't they send their enforcers to make them. Kara looked like she really wanted to argue, but couldn't come up with anything convincing to say against his words, it still doesn't make it right, power isn't the only thing that's important. Yeah. Wouldn't it be wonderful if you could rely on everyone to have some basic decency so that you didn't need to have a stick constantly hanging over them to keep them in line? Naruto asked with dry sarcasm, there wouldn't even be any need for police or armies in that case. The teenaged superheroine glared at the horizon in lieu of having an argument for that. Did you know that Xana and I briefly visited other parts of this world before deciding to play our game with the Justice League? He asked suddenly, getting a curious look from the teenaged superheroine. I have no idea what country it was because I wasn't really paying attention but there was a criminal trial going on and I was curious enough to look in on it, apparently some guy threw acid on a woman because she refused to sleep with him. Please don't tell me you threw acid on him for it. Kara said almost desperately, despite cringing in sympathy for the woman, she thought that she remembered hearing something about an incident like this on the news several weeks ago and she really hoped that Naruto hadn't been the one to do it. No. He was already going to be convicted for it so I left him alone despite my knee-jerk reaction to do exactly that," Naruto said with a frown and continued, No. What really pissed me off was the fact that there were plenty of other people in the courtroom and I was able to sense that several of the older men actually seemed to think that the guy did nothing wrong. Kara's brief reassurance evaporated, as this was starting to match up to that news report. Those guys I threw acid on, lots of it. They didn't seem to think it was all that great when it was happening to them, he finished cynically and continued with a slightly bitter tone of voice, of course, I later heard that the guy's rich father got him out of jail within a week, so I went back to melt both of them and the people that the father bribed too. Kara said nothing to that, just hugged herself and turned away, these kind of displays of cruelty were way beyond what she had ever faced and it made her stomach turn, she couldn't in all honesty say that they didn't deserve it on some level but she really believed that there had to be a better way. Naruto grimaced when he looked at the slightly shaking girl, he honestly hadn't meant for the conversation to drift into this kind of direction. Basically I'm just trying to point out that people with power of any kind, either physical, financial or political can get away with a lot that the regular person can't. The only difference between them is that people with physical power are honest about it, 
he said and then continued on lighter tone, trying to steer things away from the dark topic. I did manage to heal that woman, so she isn't going to have any scarring at least, but Xana more or less dragged me out of there before I ended up getting too acid happy since we hadn't come to this world to try annihilating all evil. Do these things really make you so angry that you have to respond with even more cruelty? You can't fight evil by doing evil you know, she said quietly. Maybe not, he admitted with a sigh, but it's a problem for me when I can sense people's suffering and I'm not a huge believer in forgiveness. I don't see the use in trying to imprison people or bothering with the slow and sometimes ineffective justice system when I can smell the rot on their bones. What do you mean you can sense people's suffering? She asked curiously. I can feel the emotions of every sentient being around me, he explained and gestured to the three women in the water. Peaches is feeling a bit bored and mischievous right now and is probably going to throw water on Pammy soon. Pammy and Kitten are feeling relaxed and content, almost sleeping in fact. Kara looked at the three when he gestured, seeing that Ivy and Priscilla were sunbathing on inflatable rafts as they drifted about in the water, while Harley was doing an imitation of a shark as she swam towards Ivy and did indeed splash the plant manipulator, startling her out of her light doze and making her fall off the raft. She had to stifle a giggle at the sight, it was hard to imagine the three women as criminals when they were like this. Do you have any idea what Gotham feels like to me? It's like a septic tank that starts leaking as soon as the sun goes down. Or it used to at least, people started keeping their heads down once it became known that I was on the warpath. Everywhere I went I could feel people with evil intentions going around, or I could feel someone suffering because they were targeted by those people and many of them aren't too intimidated by Batman anymore because they know he doesn't kill. The world that I was raised in emphasized decisive action and I was pretty extreme even by those standards, so my first reaction when I come across these things is always going to be violence. You mean you can actually feel it when people suffer? Kara asked in disbelief. I get a vague sense of what is happening and I can judge how bad it is by the intensity of the emotions that people give off, he explained. Kara couldn't help a shudder at that, she couldn't say with all honesty that she would have been able to stop herself from reacting more viciously than normal if she was literally able to feel the way that people suffered, she was glad that she didn't have an ability like that, because she wasn't sure if she could have handled it. To be honest, I needed this vacation too. I've spent too much time lately in that kind of depressing environment, Xana tells me that I'll learn not to care eventually and that's a pretty scary thought all by itself, though I'm not sure if she's right, she was never mortal and doesn't have much in the way of empathy for mortals as a result. The much smaller of the two blondes bit her lip and tentatively decided to try and stop judging him, she still didn't agree with his extermination policy and never would, but it was obvious that he wasn't evil. He just had a more extreme opinion on proper punishment for crime to go along with his more acute sense for how bad some people really were. Is that why you picked this isolated spot? Kara asked, having wondered about the reason for the private stretch of beach reserved exclusively for their use. Yeah, Naruto admitted, I wanted to get away from people for a little while, I'm actually walking on finding a way to limit or block off my sensing, which it turns out is a lot harder to do than learning how get it started. Kara gnawed on her bottom lip for a while as she considered the moral conundrum of deliberately blinding oneself to the suffering of others or allowing yourself to see it and feeling the urge to react with lethal violence. She'd thought that things were simple, that the horned blonde was a bad person for killing so many, but the truth was anything but simple, she knew that Naruto didn't feel any guilt for the people he killed, that much was obvious, but did it make him a bad person if he killed those that would go on to cause suffering to others later? It was all just too confusing. Why did you help them by the way? She asked abruptly, looking towards the other three women again. They're not bad people and I wanted to see what they would do with a second chance, so far, it seems to be paying off, I doubt any of those three will go back to crime, Pammy Might and Peaches will probably go along with her if that happens because she doesn't have anyone else, but Kitten definitely won't. That made Kara smile. It was an undisputably good thing if he managed to get them to turn away from life as criminals and she was glad that the conversation had drifted away from the previously dark subject matter. Well, if you won't let me go home then I might as well go splash them too, she said lightly and took off her outer clothing to reveal the bathing suit. Splash them huh? Watch this, he said with a conspiratory grin and looked towards the ocean. Kara looked and couldn't help grinning along as three water pillars rose, each carrying one of the women upwards until they were at least 10 feet above the water level and being held upright by their feet. Naruto let us down. Pamela demanded her demand went ignored as the water pillars surged across the ocean, 
carrying their shrieking captives around by the feet for a minute until they were brought back with a splash. That actually looked kinda fun, Kara admitted, I'm so glad you agree, Naruto stated ominously and grabbed her. What are you doiiiiiing? She trailed off in a scream as he tossed her towards the ocean and made the water form a cushion to catch her just before she would have crashed into it. You bastard, that was really scary, she shouted at him indignantly, she'd never realized how frightening it was to be falling and unable to fly. Naruto just grinned at her as he made his way towards the water, all four of them would be doing their level best to drown him now so that might be fun. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
her skirt rode up her legs and she flashed her panties at him. Not bad, better than I thought it would be actually, he complimented, making no comment on the panty flash. The next few hours, Naruto had Kara doing flexibility stretches that made her muscles ache in ways that she couldn't ever recall them aching, though she was very glad when the taller blonde pointed out that if it hadn't been for her powerful physiology, the ache would have stayed with her for days at a time instead of minutes and it would have taken weeks or even months to make the same amount of progress in limbering her up. Once that was done they moved up to repeating attack movements to build some muscle memory and then some light sparring while Naruto demonstrated new moves every now and then. Eventually, Kara stopped feeling embarrassed about the constant panty flashing because he never mentioned it and started enjoying the instruction, even with this short time, she could already see that the changes in stance, positioning and execution of her attacks was letting her put a lot more strength behind her blows, not to mention that the instruction on how to fall properly let her reduce downtime if not injury since she had that invulnerability going for her. She definitely needed to invest in some shorts though, in retrospect, a skirt had been a really bad idea as part of her outfit. For Naruto's part he was quite amazed at how quickly she learned, it counted for a lot that there was no need for any physical conditioning except for some stretching exercise to get her more flexible and even that was done quickly, but still, she learned anything physical at truly impressive speed, he figured that Kryptonians or Argonians or whatever Onians must build muscle memory faster than humans, a lot faster. You're picking this up really fast, my first sensei would have loved to have you as a student, he complimented dryly as he blocked her punches and kicks. Thanks, she said sincerely, smiling while she did so, once they had gained some traction, this had turned out to be lots of fun, what was this sensei of yours like? Hitaki Kakashi, a lazy porn addict with a hobby of being late to everything and making terrible excuses for it, your ability to learn so fast would have been exactly what he likes in a student, someone that he barely needs to lift a finger to teach. Doesn't sound like a very good teacher, she commented. That's because he wasn't, Naruto agreed. I think you might need a different teacher than me though, he concluded with a sigh. What do you mean? She asked with a frown, stopping her attack. I'm too big, Naruto responded dryly, it would be better if you were taught by someone that knows a martial art more suited to your size, it works well enough because of your natural strength, but there are a lot of techniques that you can't use because you're too small, you should ask Batgirl to pick up your teaching and you can come to me for a spar if I'm still around by then. Oh, that makes sense. Kara said with a nod and relaxed her stance, not feeling tired in the slightest, are we done for today? Just one more thing, Naruto said, getting curious look from the Argon. A sudden wind picked up and lifted her skirt up, making her squeal in surprise and instinctively push the front of it down with her hands. Meanwhile, Naruto had appeared behind her with a burst of speed and shamelessly ogled her panty-clad bottom. Why? You've seen them so many times already she demanded with her face burning indignantly. There's always room, for more panty shots, Naruto said sagely with a serene smile, forcibly bursting the blood vessels in his nose to cause an explosive nosebleed. He didn't bother dodging when she rammed his face with a flying knee strike, it was well executed and she had hadn't held back much in her leap. Naruto was proud, xxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxx
she found both of them to be sleeping soundly, with Harley hugging Pamela like a teddy bear. Their time together on the beach had been stilted and awkward at first, colored as it was by their hostile past interaction, but things had smoothed out eventually, in no small part due to their combined efforts at drowning Naruto. She wasn't completely certain, but if she had to guess, then Pamela had been the one keeping Harley sane since the Joker's death and it was obvious that they cared for each other a great deal as evidenced by how grabby Harley was being in her sleep and the fact that Ivy was letting her do it. It was nice to see and it made her hopeful that the two women wouldn't go back to being criminals, she actually found herself sort of liking them now that they weren't enemies and honestly hoped that they could be friends, though things with Barbara might be a bit awkward at first. Turning away from the cute scene, she looked towards Priscilla's room, only to blink in confusion upon finding it empty, the bed was unmade and someone had clearly slept in it, or tried to at least but then abandoned it. Somewhat nervously, she turned her eyes towards Naruto's room and immediately started blushing furiously. At least she had found the former cheetah, she was kneeling in between Naruto's legs and doing her level best to swallow as much of his rod as possible, using her hands to stroke the length of it that she couldn't fit in her mouth, Kara really wanted to look away but found herself unable to tear her eyes away from the sight. That was a circumstance that she came to regret mere moments later when Priscilla's cheeks bulged and a thick white fluid escaped from the sides of her mouth, which she then proceeded to swallow and lick up rapturously. It must taste really good, Kara thought with a sort of horrified fascination, before immediately shaking her head in denial, she was not a pervert, or a peeper. Seeing that the two of them were about to continue and that Naruto was apparently unaware of her accidental voyeurism, Kara turned to her private balcony and prepared to fly away, she doubted that Naruto would notice her escape since he was, otherwise engaged. XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
as well as her subsequent shame over that desire, despite not being human, she was still a teenager and teenage hormones at least were something that her species had in common with humans. Not that she had any interest in Naruto exactly, it was just that the whole incident had kickstarted her already budding interest in things like that. The horned blonde was a bit too old for her the same way that she was too young for him, not to mention that large parts of his personality rubbed her the wrong way, and he was spoken for, can't forget that even though his relationship with Xana didn't exclude flings with other women for reasons unknown to her. She groaned quietly and shook her head, trying to banish the distracting thoughts going through her head, it was unbelievable just how much chaos that annoying man had introduced into her thoughts by summoning her right into the middle of his sexual encounter with Priscilla. Looking around the room she caught sight of Naruto's sword, standing oh so casually in a corner of the room, it took her mind away from the dirty thoughts at least. Biting her lip, she made her way over and took it, looking over the unadorned black sheath and long hilt curiously, soon she found herself drawing the blade slowly from its sheath, trying to keep the rasp of steel as quiet as possible. She blinked incredulously when she just kept on drawing when she knew that the whole blade should have been out already, once the entire blade was drawn, she held it easily in one hand and set it next to the sheath, confirming that yes, the actual blade was somehow longer than its sheath. She put that aside as another quirk of Naruto's and focused on the sword itself. A blade this long would have been pretty awkward to carry around at full length anyway so some kind of trick to make it more convenient made sense. The long blade glinted dangerously in the first light of dawn, holding an intoxicating shimmer along its deadly edge, it was an instrument of death and did nothing to hide it, but it was still beautiful, its majestic curvature and the surpassing quality of the blade having an almost hypnotic effect on Kara even though she had only a passing interest in swords before this. Experimentally, she gave it a few swings, being careful not to accidentally hit anything with it, Kara wasn't sure, but she thought that the blade actually felt as if it disapproved of her somehow, which reminded her about stories of swords that had a spirit of their own. Having fun. Hearing Naruto's amused voice from behind her so suddenly and without warning startled her badly for several reasons, firstly, he'd snuck up on her, secondly, she was still terribly embarrassed about what she had been summoned into some hours ago, thirdly, she'd been playing around with his sword without permission. Due to this, she yelped and nearly threw the sword in her instinctive haste to let go of it, as if the speed of that action would somehow undo the fact that she'd been caught with her hand in the cookie jar. The kusanagi sailed a short distance through the air and landed blade first on the back of the couch, cleaving through it as if it was made of air, along with a corner of the coffee table in front of it. Well, that's probably going to upset whoever is going to have to pay for it, Naruto commented amusedly. Kara started stammering out an apology, inwardly wondering just how much deeper of a hole she could dig for herself in regards to her embarrassment around the horned blonde, maybe she would accidentally insult his wife next? Would you like to learn how to use a sword? Naruto asked curiously, finding her embarrassment quite endearing. I tried to run away, interrupted your, uh, private time, played around with your sword without permission and you're offering to teach me more, she blurted out incredulously. Well of course you tried to run away, I did kidnap you after all and you're a nice girl that wants to help her cousin even if I don't think he deserves it, it's not like you intended to interrupt me and kitten and you were just curious about the kusanagi, not trying to steal it, Naruto explained patiently, grinning at her. I guess that might be nice, though I'd need a smaller sword, she muttered, feeling embarrassed by the fact that he was being so persistently nice even now, how the hell does someone admit to kidnapping and make it sound nice anyway? Ah, you're so cute. Naruto exclaimed and hugged her, she was just too damn cute. Hey, let me go. Thanks guys. 